Hello everyone! Welcome to Endure the King, everyone's favorite video series. Now, I'm doing this a little bit differently. Usually, I would make Endure the King three parts to make it a little bit more watchable, because I know Ask the King can always get long. But I figured, since the past two Ask the Kings, I never really finished them. I never did part three, and I don't think I did part two and part three of the last one. So, instead of doing in separate videos, because I've noticed for some reason, every time I try to do it, either DSP drama happens where it's like, oh, I need to do a video that diverts my attention, or I just kind of get busy with other stuff in my life that kind of take away from it. So instead of doing that, I'm going to take the time right now to just watch all of the parts in one video. So it might be long. This video might be a long video. Nothing I could do, okay? <laughs> Sound good? There you go. So let's start watching this. Uh, pre-stream, Mr. Hustuff has uploaded for us, uh, I'm not sure we're gonna watch the whole video, but we'll watch as much, maybe. Alright, so sound good? Alright, Genetic Gamer chewed again, he says, what is your opinion on the constant flavor of the month? So, for example, Minecraft, Fidget Spinners, and Fortnite, and all the people who seem to jump on them. I think that these people are frauds who purposely stream popular things in order to make a quick buck, keep- They're frauds because they play games that are popular. What kind of logic is that? God of War is pretty popular, so is DSP a fraudulent streamer then? Like, I can kind like the only ones I, I the only kind of streamers that I find are fraudulent. Uh, I would probably make the case for would be, uh, DSP in some regard because I, a lot of the stuff he says is kind of, you know, you know, it, it is what it is, right? There's that, and then there's, like, these people who play a game, then they kind of, like, try to divert your attention away from what you're watching, and they just don't really care about what they're playing. I don't know. I don't, I don't know necessarily how to describe it. I mean, I guess to me, the way that you could really feel for a fraudulent streamer would be to watch it, and then you to develop your own opinion on that, I guess. It's all personal taste. But basing that off of the games they play is kind of dumb. In my opinion, I, I think it's more, uh, it, it makes more sense, it would make more sense to base that off of, uh, their commentary than what they play. Keep up your, keep it up, your content is at least original and honest. Original? Uh, how, how is DSP's content original? He plays video games. Everyone plays video games. It, it's the most basic thing you could do on stream is play a video game it, it's how is that original it would it would be more original if he i i i don't know i, I don't know how you could take playing a video game on stream and make it original i don't really get that i mean maybe if you edit the video like donkey for example or recently shout out to zombie zombie smasher over here he he uh, sh shared a video that was just amazing. The video is called The Best Playthrough of Metal Gear Solid 3. There's one on almost every Metal Gear game. And I fucking love that video. It's it's funny, it's hilarious. It's, see, that's original because he, he adds clips in it. He, he makes little things interesting about it that makes it funny. See, that's original. DSP's play DSP's content is just picking up a controller and playing a game. That's not really original. And I don't really see people making that clause. Like, I have a feeling, I, I have a hunch. If you ask any streamer that plays a video game, if you ask them, is this original? Are you making original content? They might just say no. This isn't original. This is just me streaming. I'm just streaming playing a video game. And that's it. I mean, maybe the setup could be original, like, oh, I'm playing a game, but I'm listening to, like, a video off camera and reacting to that, or I'm doing, or I'm talking about other stuff during this stuff. You know, maybe the commentary, you could kind of make ways for being original, but even DSP's commentary isn't original. I mean, he's doing commentary that he kind of claims is the status quo for Twitch. Because if you go before he started doing Twitch streams, he said, well, everyone on Twitch, uh, they stop the game, they do shoutouts, they, they constantly, uh, nag you to, to sub to them, blah, 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 blah. And then that's what he's doing in his commentary right now. So it, 
in that regard, it's not really original. It's the same shit. He's been lately trying to push the narrative that him doing shoutouts is original and no one does it on Twitch, which is not necessarily true. Not almost no, not not everyone on Twitch does shoutouts as much, and not all of them don't do shoutouts either. So. You know, it is what it is. Well, genetic Gamer, here's the thing. Like everything, there's a generalization, and then there's the, the, the group mentality. In particular, when you're talking about Minecraft, Fidget Spinners, and Fortnite, there are people who actually really love this stuff. They play it because they enjoy it. There's people out there who I've seen who are incredibly creative in Minecraft and have done really amazing, fun things in the game. Uh, I'm sure there's people out there who are the master of Fidget Spinners, and they could do amazing... Why, you know, why is Fidget Spinners part of this you, no one streams fidget spinners like th this this meme of hating on fidget spinners like I, I i i will say this i was surprised how quickly the hate of fidget spinners died because for a while everyone's like oh fuck fidget spinners i hate them but then people started to be like well it's just a stress toy and that's really all it is because it's like the um the stress balls you know the one that you squeeze and like the eyes pop out that kind of shit like the hate for fidget spinners died pretty quickly and no one really cares about them anymore. That's that's how quickly people moved on from it. And, and the only place that still hates fidget spinners is DSP's community. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but it's just kind of annoying to hear this meme of, Oh, the fidget spinners, oh, they're goofy, stupid things. Like, okay. No tricks and everything to impress you and they actually love playing around with the things. And in Fortnite, let's face it, Fortnite was released in the fall of 2017. It really didn't get mainstream popularity, all right, <clears throat> until just a month or two ago. So honestly, the game... It was already kind of popular when it came out in 2017. People were kind of talking about it, and then it just kind of snowballed to what it is now. And even now, it's kind of dying in popularity. I mean, it still brings in numbers. People still talk about it, sure, and play it. But, you know, it's not like... I don't think we're going to get, uh, you know, any celebrities outside of Drake playing Fortnite anytime soon, or as much, I guess I should say. That's 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 my uh, assumption. Had a fan base of people who were playing it before it blew up virally popular on Twitch, okay? um, So, no, not everyone who plays these things is someone just looking to jump on the viral bandwagon. That is a, a false statement. I don't agree with your statement. That was your statement, not mine. But but he got that. He probably formed that statement from watching you, though, because if you watch DSP talk about Fortnite, he gets really heated about it. He's like, well, look, it's popular. It's the it's the flashy game on, and this and blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, he probably formed his opinion from DSP's hatred. <laughs> Absolutely, it can be said that there are tons of people who, when they see something becomes popular, all of a sudden, it becomes their favorite thing to do, and all of a sudden, they've got to jump on the bandwagon and play. There are people who maybe played Fortnite a couple times, but they were on the PUBG bandwagon, but as soon as Fortnite blew up, that's it, we're dropping PUBG, we're playing Fortnite, right? Um, Minecraft. There are people who never played Minecraft before, and then when Minecraft got huge, they jumped in it because they knew it was popular. Now, back back then in particular, when Minecraft... No, I like how he's kind of saying all this stuff, like, oh, people jumped on this, but he, but this guy jumps on everything that gives them views. Oh, well, God of War is not doing any any views, anything for views for me. Oh, I gotta uh, switch it up to Bloodborne and Ultra Street Fighter 2 and PUBG because that gives me money. I, like, like, I, I just love that he, he goes... On these tangents but then it's like if you ask him oh why do you play PUBG if you hate the game oh well fan interaction but if you go watch his PUBG streams he just gets cheers and he just sucks the cheers and tips and shit I wonder why he still plays PUBG like I I I, I kind of feel that DSP has been going through withdrawals of, of not playing PUBG for for weeks I just feel like that he's just like I need to play PUBG. I need to play that. I need to get my money, dude. It was white hot popular. It was more about YouTube. Really, live streaming wasn't the big thing then. Because that was quite a while ago. But still, it needs to be said, you're absolutely right. You're always going to have those people. All right? You're always going to have those people. Um, <clears throat> There were people who, you know, frankly, when I was doing videos on YouTube back in the day, 
I did gameplay videos and only gameplay videos. That's all I did. Now, eventually, I did a little bit of vlogging here and there, but gameplay has always been my main focus, all right? Then, all of a sudden, when it became possible to monetize gameplay videos on YouTube, you had big YouTube comedians and vloggers who all of a sudden broke into gaming. Oh, all of a sudden, I'm the biggest gamer ever. I just never told you guys. And now I'm going to play video games on YouTube for massive profit. And they would bring their fan bases over to watch them horribly play games. They would get paid to play games for paid... They watch, it, they watch them to play games horribly. You play games horribly too, and you keep telling us... It's okay to see me fail. It's, it's this or that. He'll come to watch you play the game. Oh, but if the person is popular and he... Okay. Paid advertisements is ridiculous, okay? You're always going to have that. This is a commercial atmosphere. I hate to say it, guys. It is. Whenever money is involved, it's a commercial atmosphere. You're going to have the, the bandwagon jumpers, all right? Um... Yeah, DC's not a bandwagon jumper. He just happened to play PUBG for free. He did... He had it as a Patreon goal... Then, he, then the goal didn't get hit, and he played it anyway. But he's not a bandwagon jumper. Okay. He he insists on playing... Uh, what's that game called? Stick in a Hard... Was it called Stick in a Hard Place? Oh, I don't even... Or was it... Getting Over It. That's the game. He jumped in on that game. He insisted on adding that to the fucking uh, Indies Marathon because he heard it was a viral popular game. He played VR Chat. But DSP doesn't hop on bandwagons. But he only played VR chat out of the blue for, for reasons. Okay. Now, here's the difference. What you need to do is really look at people who have talent versus people who are popular only for the sake of being popular. And here's what I mean by that, all right? Without naming any names, the other day I saw a tweet on Twitter in my timeline from someone who is a humongous streamer. Uh, and they were he's actually talking about Soda, soda Poppin. I'm going to try, try, guys, to... Find. <laughs> I love Wes Greek Greek picture. I like the, I like this picture. It's a good one, but uh, I you should find the actual poster of it, Wes, and actually uh, Photoshop it, change the uh, word from God of War to Bun of War. But uh, let's see who tweeted it. I think it's Bill. Bill did it. Uh. Hmm. Is this? <laughs> oh, how did I miss that? That that's pretty funny. Oh, god damn it! Who tweeted it? Maybe it was Goutside. Goutside probably did it because Goutside's pretty on the ball. Oh, talking about Vault Boy. Ooh, that's, that's something. Uh, it is what it is, I suppose. There. Damn it. If I can't find it, I can't find it. But I'm pretty sure I saw it. Hmm. Nope. Uh, maybe Phoenix Rush? Oh. Okay, if, he, if I can't find on Phoenix Rush, I, I'm, I'm, I'm bailing on this. But I could have sworn. I saw it. Where is it? Okay. Rip. But it was Soda, Soda Poppin' whatever. He, uh, he... Tweeted something about like how he's gonna actually talk about it. So but that's it's sort of popping. He's talking about truly complaining. Now here's their complaint. Wait till you hear this complaint. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, got a clap for you, Mr. Hudson. He found it for us. I searched for nothing. It was all in vain. God damn it. But here it is. Ben. Uh, he's talking about uh, soda popping. Been pretty awful lately when it comes to games to play. Tbh, or maybe it's just me. Being stubborn, loved God of War, but man, sometimes I'm so bored not having that go-to game to fall back on every day. Tomorrow, Shope, Shope, Keep to Comes out. I'm hoping it's my saving grace. See you all tomorrow. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to look, like, I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking this or, or putting too much thought into what he was saying, but I feel like that he's mostly complaining about, he want, he wants more to play. 
Like, it wants a game you can always go to and be like, and to unwind and stuff like that. And I gotta, I gotta see where that's coming from, unless he's talking about, honestly, views and shit, but look how hypocritical this is. DSP has been be crying for weeks. Uh, Mr. Stuff even has a video about how DSP loves God of War, but, uh, he, uh, has to switch it up because the views are down and I can't, I'm not, I can't pay the bills. And he's giving shit to sort of pop in for this. I don't know, I, 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 it always amazes me when he makes these direct, 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 uh, contradictions about his own viewpoints like this, how he doesn't, he's not aware of it. It blows my mind. I can kind of see when it's like stuff that's subtle, subtle contradictions that he makes. But when he makes these generalized ones that, that are blatantly obvious, it blows my mind that him and his fans don't fucking call him out on it. Blows my mind. I can't believe that I can't get another good staple game to stream. I mean, you know, Fortnite's good and all, but I can't really find any other good- Oh, it changes the name of Fortnite. Games. Wow. And God of War also has been pretty good recently, but I mean, I really would just like a good go-to game that I could go back to and stream and, and have fun with and, and entertain you guys, but there's just nothing out there. I'm not even kidding you. That Sounds like he just wants a game to entertain his fans, which is like... Isn't that what you do? You, you try to play games that entertain your fans? Okay. That was the tweet. I was reading, I was like, there are thousands of games. There are so many games. I mean, I'm pretty sure... So many games. Okay, Phil. So why don't you play those so many games? Oh, I can't do it, dude. I need to make money. Sure, everyone, you could find something that you could play and enjoy, right? And maybe get good at, and it could become your go-to game. So I'll be honest with you guys. What are my go-to games? Well, PUBG. Street Fighter is one of them. Uh, even though I'm not, I don't like the popular new Street Fighters. Going back to the old Street Fighters, that's one thing I can always go back to. So you never went back to all Street, Street Fighter Two until like you were desperate, and I guarantee that when uh, the Street Fighter Collection comes out, he's at most I could see him probably play uh, two, which, uh, but I I don't see him switching it up with like Alpha Three and Third Strike to mix it up a little bit. I don't see him doing that. When the 30th anniversary, he might do Third Strike here and there, but I think he's going to be exclusive to Street Fighter 2 because he's a fucking fanboy of that game. Some first-person shooters, you know, sometimes I go to Call of Duty or whatever. That's one of the things, if I play enough, I can get good at. Or difficult games that challenge me where you know I'm going to rage. For example, the From Software series, I would say, is a go-to series. He, yeah, but he he delayed uh, starting Blood Bowl. Uh, Sounds like something weird, but Bloodborne. He delayed that for, like, so long. I thought there was a bug, but... He delayed that game for so long, and the only reason why he started playing it because he didn't know what the fuck to do that one week uh, leading up to God of War. He had no idea what the fuck to do. So he's like, well, I guess I'll play Bloodborne. I mean, yeah, Bloodborne. But yeah, he did it because he knew he could go back to it. Okay, so then why is he now playing Dark Souls Remastered? I already played it, dude, but I thought that was your go-to game. Hmm, okay. Series, when things are slow, I can always go back and play a From Software game and people will enjoy it, all right? Yeah, yeah, now, is that why you're going to go back to, to Dark Souls Remastered? Oh, wait, no, you're not. Okay. Why? Well, folks, I hate to say it, it's because I have some talent. Talent? Yeah. Talent? Playing video games is a talent now. Okay. Guys, my talent is eating M&M's. Uh, you know, it's, I like M&M's. They're, they're cool. It's my talent, guys. I'm going to do a live talent for you guys. I'm going to eat two M&M's. And these are not just any ordinary M&M's, guys, by the way. It's it's almond M&M's. Almond. This is talent, guys. Mmm. Um. I'm so talented. You know, it's because not only am I entertaining on stream, but I also do have some kind of talent when it comes to video games. Every video game? Absolutely not. I'll openly admit to you guys, I'm not very good at most games. And a lot of games, I'm flubbing But he does chat on people for being bad at games that, make mo that get paid. He literally does chat on them 
like four minutes ago. But oh, not, but now it's okay that he can admit that. Okay. Around, I'm sucking. I'm not paying attention. I mean, in recent years, definitely I've gotten better than that. But over time, I would say it's fighting games, certain first-person shooters, and the From Software games that over time I've gotten better at, and they've become my staple games. So when I see really? a ginormous streamer complaining that I don't have a go-to game, what that tells me... I, I cannot wait until he plays 30th Anniversary, because he'll be actually playing against real fighters, and he's going to find out that uh, he's not that good. Me is ...that guy literally doesn't have talent. No talent what he thing. has is a virally popular following who probably like him because he's a jokester on stream or maybe has a good yeah, personality. Yeah, if you if you care about entertaining your fans, you have no talent. You know, it, that, that, that is kind of shitty. Like, I could make a, uh, a, let's say I make a webcomic. I keep talking about it, but let's say I make one and, and no one's, no one's enjoying it. I'm going to sit there and be like, man, I need to find something to do with, the, with a webcomic that will make people entertained. Does that mean I have no talent? No, that just means I want to make something that entertains you. If someone wants to play a video game that's entertaining to everyone, he wants to find a game that is entertaining to everyone. That doesn't mean he has no talent, but okay. But he's having a hard time just picking up any game and getting people interested in it. That's not good. You know what not I mean? Good, dude. And what that shows is maybe this guy is one of the people, as gamer, Genetic Gamer is suggesting, is someone who jumps on a bandwagon. Oh, well, Fortnite was popular, so I jumped on it. God of War is popular now, so I jump on it. But they're not my go-to games. I wish I had go-to games. Like, well, then maybe you should actually get good at games. Who jumps on a bandwagon. Oh, well, Fortnite was popular, so I jumped on it. God of War is popular now, so I jump on it. But they're not my go-to games. I wish I had go-to games. Like you jump to games all the time. He rushes through games, drops games to play other games. He, wa he was saying that he might have to drop Bloodborne Redemption Run for a while because he's going to play God of War, but he doesn't jump to games. It's amazing that DSP can say this and not at all think, wait a second, I, I, can't, I have no room to talk. No, no awareness. No awareness. Like, well, then maybe you should actually get good at games, <laughs> you know, instead of just sitting there complaining, saying there's no good games. That's ludicrous. ludicrous. There's so many good games out there right now. Anyone could jump onto any, any genre. You could go to any genre, right, whatever, and find a niche and get good at it and enjoy it and have that be your go-to genre. Uh, you could definitely... Yeah, but maybe he, he wasn't thrilled with the genres he was having as a go-to and he, he just wants to find one that is a go-to. Like... You know, sometimes, like, I, I got Survive and I got Monster Hunter World for both games to kind of play on stream at times that there's no other game I want to play on. Like, I played God of War on stream on Thursday, and that was fun, and I like doing that, but sometimes I might want to just do a relaxed uh, stream because with God of War, there's a lot of story to it that I want to pay attention to. And, this, and sometimes I feel like when I stream it, I either lose some of that immersion or, or it's just like I get too immersed and I can't really um, do anything fun for the stream and I can't really do any commentary or, or I don't know, I can't, it's just, it, it loses something. There's nothing wrong with streaming God of War either. I like, I like streaming it, but it's just, I feel like that there's, you know, there, there might be a game I want to do that's less intensive or, or something like that. So, you know, I could go back to Metal Gear Online, back to Survive, back to Monster Hunter World, play those games and just kind of have fun and relax and be like, you know, oh, I'm going to go on a hunt. So I'm going to hunt this, this monster and then just do that. Now I have not played about some world in a while, unfortunately, but I've been kind of getting that itch in the back of my mind. think it's saying you should go back to monster Hunter world. So, uh, you know, maybe next week I'll do it when I stream again. But, uh, again, that's, that's the kind of stuff that matters. Sometimes you'll don't want to play a game that is that intensive or, or anything like that. Like I kind of didn't like streaming Yakuza. Honestly, because I like playing that game, you know, story-wise. I, I, it's a game that I, I might just stream once I beat the game. If it just opens up and allows you to do whatever you want, I can stream that. That's fine. But I don't want to stream it when I'm like, I want to just get through the story and I want to, you know, experience that. That kind of stuff I might not want to stream. But if it's something that's like, you know, oh, okay, I can just do this, you know, whatever. And JRPGs kind of work that way, too. Like, Persona is, I can kind of stream that just fine. Uh, without Atlas's 
crazy regulations on it, but it is what it is. You can definitely see the difference. You can definitely see the difference between a streamer who's just there to be silly and have a, a million people in stream chat throwing money at them and versus someone who's there for the love of the game. There's a big difference and a diversiveness between that, all right? So I think what people need to do is actually start seeing through the bullshit. Just because someone's virally popular and they're the big streamer or the big YouTuber doesn't mean they're the best. It doesn't even mean that they have talent. It just means that for some reason, maybe it's luck, maybe it's the right timing, they became a flash-in-the-pan success that exploded. And because of their luck or timing, here they are as one of the top guys. And no matter what they do, they get popularity, even though maybe they're not even very good. You know, I've been seeing some streamers. I've been watching some of the streamers. I thought you don't have time to watch other streamers, though. Funny how 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 we magically found time to to uh to watch other streamers, right? But he said if you watch other streamers, he'd hate his drop. But he's watching other streamers, okay. And they don't really do much very different from me, quite frankly. What the difference between them and me is they don't have a five-year legacy of people shitting on them on YouTube. Saying that they're horrible people, saying that they're pedophiles. Yeah, no one has hate on the internet. No one. Absolutely no one. Only Phil gets hate on the internet. You know, Anita got a lot of shit on the internet. Like, everyone fucking hates, doesn't, does, uh, dislikes her and all that kind of stuff. But she somehow uh, makes more money than him and Jonathan McIntosh. Just, just think about that. Anita Sarkeesian, who did a video series that a lot of people hated, and a lot of people criticized Anita for many things is able to, to continue doing her job, and DSP can't get as much numbers. I mean, obviously, Anita Sarkeesian is a little bit more successful in the sense that she gets more word of mouth and all that kind of stuff, etc. But, you know, it's just this excuse of, I get hated on the internet, is ridiculous. Everyone gets hated on the internet. Now, the only thing that, that is, that's, that's slightly different, or that is a little bit how we want to take it, is that, yeah, sometimes DSP gets a lot of un like unwarranted or over-the-top kind of hate. Uh, stuff that's a little bit more malicious. Sure, you might get that kind of stuff from time to time. But a lot of it would not have happened if DSP just moved on. But he kept feeding, taking the bait all the time. And he still does, even though he says he doesn't. It is what it is. And that they're scam artists and all that shit. Instead, people actually embraced them positively. And those people ended up being very successful. So what a difference when you don't get stalked by a bunch of people for five years and have your whole life torn stalked. apart. So watching his videos is stalking him. Okay. Now someone say, oh, but Theo, they, uh, they make sock accounts. They go to his Twitch streams. They go to his forums. I mean, every DSP fan does that. This is what it is. Personally, that you can actually Everyone be successful on the internet instead of struggling. Wow, what a fucking surprise. Like, I didn't know that, right? Um, But it is what it is. You know, I am where I am, and I'm happy to at least know that where I am is somewhere that I'm okay with. I can wake up every morning and say I'm okay with who I am and what I do. I'm okay I with play games I am, for dude. the love of the game, right? Primarily, that's what I do. And then when it comes around to, okay, yes, do every once in a while, do I have to make a business decision based off of income? Sure, that happens all the time. But at least I can say I'm here to enjoy gaming and have fun with He makes business decisions, but he's not in it for money, guys. No, clearly not. You guys, and I did this before I ever made a penny doing it for years, you know, versus these people who just jump on the viral bandwagon of whatever's popular to make money. And then when But I that's not, not relevant anymore. You can't just say... Well, I used to not make money for doing this. That no one fucking cares. Once you make money and get and get paid, there you go. I mean, it, it, like whatever happened in the past is in the past. I thought you don't look at the past. Like, come on, really? Like that? That's like if a artist that doesn't get paid for his paintings, he doesn't get, he doesn't have a, like a, a stable job. He's struggling. He's he's a starving artist, and then he fi suddenly gets he uh, gets deals done he gets a lot of money gets paid and then he's like well i'm a rag I i'm a very very indie artist uh i'm not big at all and he's like but you have like your pieces all over in other museums you get all these showings you get all these galleries you you're always getting paid to do stuff like 
I mean, that's like if Shinkawa says, well, well, I'm a starving artist, guys. And it's like, but Shinkawa, you worked with, you work with Hideo Kojima, you did uh, the Metal Gear series, you're working on Death Stranding, you're doing this game, um, I can't remember the name of it, unfortunately, but he's doing another game, he did artwork for the Zombies mode in one of the Call of Duty games. Oh, but I'm a, I'm a starving artist. See, I, I am a starving artist because I, I did art before I got paid to do it, before I did Metal Gear and all this stuff, you know, so... I'm a real artist. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, I guess that that might be not necessarily the right way to look at it, actually, now that I said that out loud. Uh, but it's just, it, you know, I'm going to go back and just revise this whole thing and just say that you can't just keep looking at the past and, and saying that, oh, that's what makes me what I am today. It's like, but you make decisions on money. You care about getting paid. That's why you're playing PUBG all the time. That's why... You, you put games behind paywalls. That's why you're dropping God of War for a while, because you're not getting paid. That's... Not making them the big money anymore, they complain there's nothing to play. I mean, what a joke. You complain for the first half of 2018 of there not being any games to play that's giving you a lot of money. What? Okay, okay. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna do a little, little bonus here. Let's go to Dragon Killer, our boy Dragon Killer. Uh, let's see. Uh, you might have to scroll for a while, guys. You might have to scroll for a while. Uh, should be like in the beginning of God of War, like the beginning of that whole thing. You know. I think we're getting close. We're getting close, guys. Uh, let's see. Hey, it's coming. It's... We're almost there. Come on, load. Load. Come, come. Okay, there you go. Uh... Come on. Uh, let's see. Where is it? it, it it's like the, he listed a he listed games. Hmm. Okay, this is something. So pumped for God of War in one week now. Finally, after three plus months of passable stuff, a must play has emerged to make us remember why we all love gaming. I think God of War will be the big ga gaming turnaround that 2018 needs because it's been a dud so far and we need something big to get our juices flowing. All right. All right, so there you go. Baseball. Did a 25 bitch here, and here we go again with the trolling, but I'll do it anyway. It's kind of weird how God of War for you had so low viewers. I watched Tolo stream, and he had 600 people. All right, so baseball, two different things. Number one, Tolo and I have different audiences. Even how though is that a different audience, though? They, they watch games. There is some crossover. There absolutely is crossover. Um, we have different audiences, okay? My audience literally... Up front told me, Phil, when God of War comes out, we're just like you. We want to play this big, giant AAA release. Who said this? I've not seen a single person say this. Phil, we're just like you. We play video games, dude. Okay. It's so hyped. It's rated so highly by people. We're going to be playing it, and we don't want to watch your streams because it's going to spoil, but we will watch on YouTube uh, on demand once we get the chance. And by the way, that has 100% happened. So unlike Tolo, who basically just live streams, I've got a whole backup system on YouTube of uploading my playthroughs, and the God of War playthrough's been doing very good on YouTube. Until so recently, overall, God of War actually has been doing really well. It's just that the streams in particular haven't been doing good, all right? Because people don't want to spoil. They just want to watch on demand at their own pace later on on YouTube. So that's number one. 
Number two, Tolo's been playing the game as a crazy difficulty challenge run. Apparently, I heard he's been playing on the hardest difficulty, and it's kicking his butt, but I mean, that's part of the appeal of Tolo, is he's a very determined, very high-skilled gamer who wants to challenge the hell out of himself. Yeah, DSB doesn't want to challenge. See, see, this is why I've been saying to people that DSB is like a pro-cheese man. He will play a game and find stuff that, that he can use to exploit to get his way through the game, because he cannot handle challenge. He cannot. Every time that a game requires him to either think or to challenge himself, he's just like, fuck this, I'm I'm out. Like he and he fucking cheeses it. Like look at um at Bloodborne. He was like around the the uh, recommended he might be even over the recommended level for the old Hunters DLC. He quit it because he's like, I can't play this. Because the game requires him to actually uh, work for his wins, so he's like, I'm gonna go back and wait until I'm, like, higher level to do it. To say, look what, look what I did, I kicked this game's butt at the highest difficulty when it was a new game. That's his, kind of his niche, and he's great at it. He's a much better gamer overall than I am. I'm but, it, don't you say that when you fucking beat Bloodborne? I'm a, I'm a great gamer! I, I'm able to go do from software it shows that I'm such a good gamer. But he can't play fucking God of War or any other game for that matter on hard. He can only play on normal. Like, like I might play on normal myself. I mean, I, 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 I'm not gonna, gen like, tell him too hard about playing normal because I do that too. But I only do that for certain games. So there's a game that's like, ah, oh, you know, I'm gonna challenge myself. I do hard, but for the most part, I do stick with normal just to experience it the first time. But, I mean, come on, you can do hard on God of War. I, I played. I'm playing. Fucking God of War and Hard, it's pretty fun. I'm not stupid to to think that I'm as good as him. He's crazy good at games. He's way better than me. So his appeal is watch me come beat the shit out of this game at the hardest difficulty at launch. So his that's why he's that's not an appeal though. People like watching challenge because that's fun to watch. It's fun to play. It's fun to watch. When you you just see a game a streamer like my stream and all I did was just running perfects. I'm just you know going around just saying, killing enemies. Killing enemies, uh, you know that that might be fun and for a while, but it's just gonna be like, okay, this is boring, and you're gonna leave, you know, because it's fun to watch people challenge, get challenged, and you know, die countless times, and they try to rise above the challenge, and they and you see them progress through each fight. It's interesting and fun when you watch DSP, and he's just like, extra, 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 extra. You just want to go to sleep. It's not fun. That's why, like, his like watching him play Dragon Ball Fighters, Tekken Seven, uh, you know, Street Fighter Five were a lot of fun to watch because he struggled to play those games because he had to he had to challenge himself fighting other players. Ultra Street Fighter Two was kind of fun to watch him play, but now it's just kind of boring because everyone that plays that game is kind of. Uh, uh, scrubs at this point because all the pro players left Ultra Street Fighter 2. They kind of left and moved on. That's why people are kind of excited to see what's going to happen when he gets the third anniversary collection on the PS4 because more people will have that game. Getting the views he's getting. People want to see someone who's, you know, has a high skill level take on this very daunting task of beating it, you know, at that level. Um, So there you go. I mean, that's there the difference. Go. Tolo is going to have better viewership than me for games like that especially when he's doing it at a higher difficulty it's just that simple that's what his viewer base loves to see him do me my viewer base loves to see me just enjoy games at my own pace do fun commentary no, no, narrative no. explore and enjoy the game Maybe it's top at my own pace but... but when it's a giant new AAA release that's so hyped like god of war they're not going to want to be spoiled live so they're going to watch the youtube video i i just like how suddenly it, it's just fucking well God of War is AAA game, and and you know AAA games never get review, never get the high views. While he always hypes the hardcore gaming season for getting a lot of views. Man, it it almost sounds like he's trying to come up with reasons why he can't get views. Those instead, and that's exactly what's happened. So you know, I'm very happy to hear that Tolo streams of God of War are doing good. It's a very different style of presentation and gameplay than what I do, but it's not that my playthrough of God of War is failing. It's not. It's been very good. YouTube, my views on YouTube have been at least 50% increased. In some days, they've been double what they normally are for the past week since I started playing God of War. So in no way am I uh, complaining at all.
You know, it's been good stuff. Then why do oh, whatever? Uh, Daggerborn did a hundred bit cheer. He said, "What inspired you to grow goatee?" Uh, quite honestly, <clears throat> two things. I don't, I don't care about the goatee, TBH. So we're gonna get into everyone's favorite video, Endure the King. So let's do part one, and this, it's it's something. So the first question: Could I rearrange my setup so I don't have to turn uh, when I play games? Um, uh, for right now, the way. If you saw my stream yesterday, I was playing, I was uh, streaming in a different room because the game system is in a different room, not in this room. This room just has a comp has the uh, de my uh, desktop computer here, I have my laptop in the other room. Okay, you get you guys you guys get the get the idea. Uh so I have I kind of have to turn because the TV is like kind of right there and I can't really move it because the chair I'm in isn't like a rotatable chair. Uh, it's a stationary chair. And I can't really move the TV anywhere else because the outlet is not that far, uh, etc. So I, so in that regard, I cannot. But if once everything in the basement's fucking settled and shit, I don't really have. I have a pretty good setup down there. Uh, you know, I have a good area for where I put my computer. I have a good area to do art. I have a lot of good good areas, and I have a good background too in that in the in that room. Here, I can't really do anything because it's a room. You know, there's a door back there. I can't. Really, you know, I do have a poster. Oh, my brother has a poster up there, but, you know, it, I'm not going to mess with it. What was that noise? Um, okay. Um, you know, those are closets. Can't really, I, I, you know, I don't want to put stuff up on, on this floor or in this room, I should say, because it's not technically my room. It's my brother's room. So when he comes over, you know, to visit us, he sleeps here. So can't really do anything to his room. TBH. Oh, oops. Uh, so it is what it is. Number one, guys. <laughs> this is from Planet Jeff. He asks two questions, so let's jump right in. He says, "Phil, is there a way you might be able to rearrange your setup so you don't have to turn away so much from the TV in order to view the chat?" The main and only reason I ask, there have been some times I've noticed you missed something, and I'm sure you might have elicited some interesting commentary on it. There are other things that that, that do get missed. When you were playing Bloodborne, I specifically remember you didn't see two treasure bug things because your eyes were turned away. All right. I guess what I should do before I answer this question is elaborate on my setup. I have one of the most probably elaborate setups of anyone who it's streams. It's a dumb setup. So allow TBH. me to explain. Directly. I mean, look look where, where he's sitting. He's in front of a closet. So in order for him to get to that closet, he has to climb over his love seat or move it uh, to open it. Look how dumb that is. Okay. I don't know if that should be an emote or not. Uh, I'll let you guys decide. In front of me is my webcam. You are facing dead on straight ahead of, of me. All right, so you can see me head on at all times. Obviously, right here, I have my microphone. Right in front of me also, my gaming controller for whatever game I'm playing, usually sitting right in front of me on a nice laptop on at all times. Hold on. Obviously, right here, I have my microphone. I don't see his controller. Right in front of me also. Is that fucking tape? My gaming controller. What the fuck is that? that tape did he controller for whatever, whatever game i'm playing usually sitting right in front of me on a nice laptop desk and laptop on that desk. laptop desk slightly to my left is my laptop on which i have the stream chat okay so i can see you guys in stream chat but also i have my laptop where it shows muxy and muxy is what i use to track your cheer subs and tips during streams so when i see something change oh popped up okay now i give a shout out okay this is the stuff that I really need right in my face at all times. The laptop in particular has to be the thing up close and in my face. If that was away or somewhere else, I couldn't do shout outs mm. and I couldn't read the stream chat. So this ha absolutely has to be right here. At Why can't I you move the, the laptop desk over here? That's what I've been saying. He could have just moved the laptop to where the TV is. So if the TV's over here, he could put the d laptop right here. So so it's like he doesn't have to look that. So he doesn't have to look the other way. Like that's so dumb. I don't get this fucking setup. Can't be anywhere else. All right. Now I'm sitting on a love seat. All right. Most other streamers, they're sitting at a, at a PC set up on their desk or whatever. Right. They're just sitting right there. Um, I'm not. I'm sitting on a love seat. And so I have around me other equipment. 
For Tons example, to my left here, I have my mouse, which I use to control my desktop PC, which lets me allow to record or stop recording or stream or stop streaming. Oh, I've got okay, drink. so that's why. Okay, I was wondering, like, you know, when, when he's doing this, like, why does he always have to get up to go to his uh, laptop, uh, his desktop for things? But it's because that's where all the uh, capturing stuff is. Okay, I thought it was going through the laptop, and I was like, you know, but uh, I guess I guess that's what's going on. Okay. So right now I have a mug of water. Okay. And I have an energy drink that I usually drink one energy drink uh, per, per day to get me one energy drink per day. I didn't he drink two energy drinks on stream before usually I, I okay. ready for streaming. So that's to my left over here. And then to my far left off in the back, I have my computer monitor turned towards me and i can monitor the stream i can see the quality of the stream that's going out to twitch right now i can monitor my obs studio setup to see everything that's being captured over there so basically over here is like my command center for everything going on with the stream on my left hand side okay to my right way off to the back of the room there i have my entertainment center now on my entertainment center there is my ps3 my nintendo switch and my xbox 360 on the bottom shelf on the middle shelf is my ps4 and my xbox one and on the top shelf it's my wii u and my old wii okay and those are all sitting in the entertainment center and on top of the entertainment center is my tv okay and right here are my headphones my headphones plug into the little headphone receiver below me on the floor, and that goes off to whatever console I'm currently playing. It's attached to the back of that console. All right. <clears throat> I would tell you all the ins and outs of how I also have HDMI cables going to a splitter and my capture device. I don't need to get that much into it. So the bottom line is when I'm sitting here playing games, here's what I'm doing. I'm looking at the camera and talking to you. When I'm playing the game, I'm usually slightly tilted to the right playing the game like this. When I'm looking at stream chat, I have to look around the mic and I look down at stream chat. I'm looking over here at people okay. who are cheering, subbing, and tipping and stuff like that. And then over here, I'm constantly looking to the left to monitor the stream and make sure everything's going okay with the stream. And I wait for about 10 to 15 intervals. Oh, to, excuse me, 10 to 15 minute intervals to say, oh, okay, that video is ready. And I'll stop recording and start recording again to create the parts for YouTube. All right. So I actually... But he wants to focus on Twitch, but he still wants to make the videos viewable viewable on youtube on the fly and constantly stopping and starting recording a lot of people don't know that they think oh phil just streams and he splits it up later no i'm on the fly stopping and starting which is why how do why do people think that it's so obvious he splits the fucking part you would have to be like so blind like you might not be watching the stream at that point because he literally because when he fucking plays it's like da -da -da -da, 10 minutes Okay, we go into this room. Click. Click. Okay, we go into this room. It's so obvious. It's so bad. And I, I even, like, I made a forum post years ago, or months ago. Well, not months ago. A year ago. And I told him that he needed to make his commentary more flow better. Just flow better. Because it's so obvious that he's splitting parts that it just kind of takes you out of the or out of the stream or out of just the gameplay because no one no one on this planet when they play a game they don't just and they're talking with their friend or whatever because that's kind of what streaming kind of is like you're you're playing a game in front of your with your friends or whatever and no no one sits there and is like okay bill we're gonna go into that room okay you go into the room billy went into that room it's like th okay as soon as I finish the stream, I'm able to upload those videos to YouTube right away. It's a lot of work. It's a, a lot of work? How? It's more work to split the parts. You just do click, 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 click. Upload, 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 upload. That, that's like this most bare bones thing you could do. I could upload 10... I can upload every video I recorded on this computer right now, this second. I could do that right now. That's not a lot of work. I could I could probably do that in like in a minute. And then it might take a while for YouTube to upload it because you know YouTube is is YouTube. Okay. It's a lot of work, guys. Hell of a lot of micromanagement, but in my opinion it's how a is it micromanagement? Works and I use this system. I get I guess it's a lot of work to know how long you're streaming, but you have OBS that tells you how long. Okay. You know, for well, I started streaming in 2013, so at least five years I've been using this system, and it works, okay? Okay. Now, some people say, 
Phil, you're constantly, when we watch you playing, you're tilted to the right. Doesn't that hurt your neck? Well, no. Two reasons. Number one, I'm not like this. No. Okay, hold on. I'm going to be string that. Now, some people say, that. Phil, you're constantly, when we watch you playing, you're tilted to the right. Doesn't that hurt your neck? Well, no. Two reasons. Number one, I'm not like this. Okay. Okay, that, that's, that's a good quality. Let's go to DSP Gaming. Dun, 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 dun. Hello. Let's go to. Here. Oh, he did upload the pre-stream for uh, as the king. I I didn't think he would. I did not think he would. Uh, I'm just gonna find. Oh my god. Okay, let's watch this. All right. Guys, he's not like this. Look at that. He, oh, wait, it's Cleo. Okay, good. I, I thought I, I thought I had a Cleo up there. But look, he's just like sitting there like this. I'm not like this, dude. Okay. Let's go to. Uh, let's do Bloodborne. So. He's not like this, dude. Look, look at that pose. Hmm. Okay. Okay, Phil. Yeah, you don't you don't sit in that position. No, I'm like this. I'm tu I'm turned. Right? Playing like this. Like that is he does does that look like what he looks like in this? No, it doesn't. Completely different. He's only like that when he's just like ready to go to bed or if it's like easy cheese time. But if it's a game that is like, oh shit, challenge. Okay, yeah, look at that. Let's do, let's just go to Far Cry 5. Let's see what that, Far Cry 5. So once again, he's got you under in in his uh Oh my god, is this all cut it's the entire cutscene. Fuck you, Dave. <laughs> it's all cutscene. You have all, all right, cutscene. So the question is So look at that. He's he's leaned forward, he's looking this way. Oh, but he's like this, and he's like this. Really? Okay. This, so when I'm playing, my body is slightly turned to the right. It's not my neck that's constantly turned to the right, all right? It's not like this. It's not like I'm playing like this looking out into the hallway, you know? It's just a slight turn of the I neck. It's go not that big of a deal. Um, slight turns that can make all the difference. In an office, it like, for a while, I was told that I, my head kept bleeding like this half the time. Like, I would try to rest my head, and I would just kind of slightly be like this. And I, and I didn't notice it. Until, like, someone said, your head is always to the left. I was like, oh. And I started noticing it. I was like, okay, so I gotta, like, kind of bend my neck this way to kind of readjust it so, like, it's more centered. Like a fucking normal person. And instead so I was like this because I guess I either wore these, wore, like, headphones for too long and I'm just used to, like, resting this way. I don't know. I don't know what caused me to rest my head this way half the time, but it is what it is. It was the same deal. Yes, I had a monitor in front of me, but I also had files and things. I was constantly having to look to the side or do that. Never have I had a job where I could just do this. Duh. No, no way do, is this normal, guys. I mean, really? How many people do this when they do an office job? How many people, if you go to your job, are like this? Hello, everyone. Welcome to the office. No one. This is, this is a dumb exaggeration from Dave's part. I mean, come on. People are like this, they move around like this, they might turn their head, it, it, everyone's like flexible and they move around. You know, artists, they, they look, they have to look ahead like this to, to draw, to paint, whatever. The only time that might be slightly different is if you're using a Intuos tablet, like like the one I got. You might have the uh, tablet here and a monitor over there, so you're kind of doing this, which kind of is uh, pretty hard to draw on because, you know, you're not used to drawing like, like that's a whole other thing. There, there's a learning curve to it. Uh, but a lot of people just draw like this and all this. You're always going to be looking straight ahead.
Like, how many people, like, work at an office job, have a keyboard here, mine over there? I mean, there might be some instances where that's the case, but, I mean, come on. Really? Uh, and just stare forward. I don't think I've ever had a job where I could do that. It's constantly about turning and looking different directions or whatever. That, that's um, a lot of shit. But... You know, if anything, it's not really the turning of the neck that's dangerous, in my opinion. It's being sedentary, not getting... Turning of the neck, it is it, it, it is a problem because you might uh, be forced to stay like this because the more you hold the pose, like, you don't stay, like, permanently like that, sure, but, you know, you, it's bad posture. Like, why do you think a lot of people who are on the computer all the time have this disease where they're, like, not disease, but this posture that's, like, where they're like this... And their shoulders roll forward. It's not healthy. You're supposed to, like, that's why people, like, stretch. They do this. They try to hold this pose for a while so that their shoulders are rolled back. Because your shoulders are not supposed to be like this. And you're, you're not supposed to look, look like this because it's not natural. Oh, but of course, it's, it's, I mean, being sedentary is bad, too. I mean, that's also an issue. He's not wrong about that. But he's wrong about saying that there's no issues with holding a pose like this when it can lead to other issues. ...up and moving around a lot. Because when I'm streaming, for example, a typical stream, I start 10, 10, 15 in the morning, and I sit down and I'm streaming till what? Like 2 p.m. before I take a break? So that's four hours of just sitting. And then I finally oh, get up and walk around for 15 minutes, and I sit down for another two hours. See what I mean? I need to keep those breaks a lot. Why does he take breaks? Other streamers don't take breaks. Because if you don't realize it, being sedentary is not... What other streamers don't take breaks? Everyone takes breaks. Everyone takes breaks when they stream. The poorly played stream with Garrett, with Garrett from Mega64, he takes breaks. Uh, I've seen Tevin take breaks during his streams. People take breaks. Who doesn't take breaks? I mean, there might be like instances where people might not take breaks for certain goals or whatever, but people take breaks. No one streams like for 10 hours straight. No one does that. They... Well, they may stream for hours straight by keeping the stream running, but they're not going to sit here for 10 hours doing nothing. Like, some people even do, like, wor like workout during their stream. They may play a game, and they're like, okay, we made this far. Since I died this many times, I'm going to do this many kettlebell swings, or this many, like, you know, rows or whatever. They might take breaks during their stream. People do that. The only person I, I've not noticed take a break, but I haven't really sat, sat through an entire stream is the low tier god. I don't know if he takes breaks, so I can't really say necessarily that's the case or not, but I have not seen him take a break. But other streamers take breaks. He's not the only one that take, that doesn't that takes breaks. Not good for you. You could cause blood clots. You could cause a lot of health issues. So that's why I have to at least take a couple breaks uh, during the day when I'm streaming. And it that's another reason break. some people ask me, why don't I stream six, eight hours at a time? That's why. It's not good for you. He could, he could stream six, eight hours at a time and take breaks. Why doesn't he do that? Like, that, that, that makes no sense. What? It's good to have natural breaks where you're doing activity between your streams instead of just sitting here for marathons. It's not healthy for your body at all. It's just not, okay? Um, now, going along with your question, all right? He says, uh, why, why don't I rearrange my setup? Well, it's very simple. I've talked about this for years. I'll say it again. I just realized I that the whole tangent had nothing to do with the question. Okay. Setup sadly has to be the way it is. I mean, I because over here thing. is my modem along with my PC. I honestly didn't want my setup like this when I moved into this house. I wanted to have my PC and all that set up against this wall. And I honestly, I wanted to have it so my PC was there and the TV were there. I wanted everything like kind of on one side. And then the other side was going to be storage. But when I moved in, I was told it can't be that way. That the internet is on this side of the room. Okay. And I need to have my modem over here. I said, I said well, can't I put my modem over here on this wall? And they said, no, because the line. I got it. I got, I got a question. Why couldn't you move the TV? On the side where the modem is. Why? I mean, I'm assuming, I'm, I'm assuming that the side where the computer is, is the same, like, length as the side where the TV 
I mean, it might be a little different since there's a closet, maybe, but he could arrange it so that it works in that regard. Why can't why can the TV be on that side? Okay. Uh, this wall actually directly goes downstairs to my TV, and that's where my other internet setup is. If you guys aren't aware, I have two. And they said no, because okay. the line on this wall actually directly goes downstairs to my TV, and that's where my other internet setup is. If you guys aren't aware, I have two. This, this internet setup right here is my business class, super fast internet through Comcast, the fastest available in my area, and it's dedicated just to live streaming and uploading videos, period. I so then why don't you put the business class internet underneath the TV? You know, like, you know, in that floor that you just said, and have the wire run up through the wall to the floor or whatever. I mean, maybe that's not ideal because you'll have a cord going along the wall. So maybe it's not, that's not ideal. I do nothing else with that. So I can live stream at the highest quality. I can stream and, 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 and upload and no issues. It's always there. I have another modem downstairs that's just regular internet. That modem is hooked up to a wireless setup that I then use to do things like use my phone, watch oh. Netflix or WWE Network or PS View downstairs on my TV, the internet for my uh, laptop and my, you know, my girlfriend Kat's stuff, her phone and stuff are all connected wirelessly to that modem. That way there's no internet. So, no, so, no so how does Kat play online, dude? Wow. He's so selfish. He's not, he's not showing that business class internet with Kat. No, you know what? I guarantee, I guarantee he's running another line uh, for Kat to use the business class internet for her online games. Guarantee it. Problem where, oh God, you know, someone's watching a movie on Netflix. Someone's using their phone. It won't interfere with my streams or my uploading. All right. So what I was told when I moved in here is that no, the line over here in this wall Oh, the right hand side of my my office is directly connected to the one downstairs so you can't have two modems on the same exact wire or else you're going to be sucking bandwidth out of each other so i was told this wire over here is a separate line that connects to the outside so i had to have one modem here and one modem down there now that being said now i'm screwed because i can't have my computer stuff here and the tv and everything over here on this side of the office it doesn't fit there's only a oh. small area over there. So I had to split what I wanted okay, to do. Okay, the... it doesn't fit. Then, Phil, you get a little creative. You get a little creative about it. So you just look at maybe where the computer desk is. It, you put it next to your fucking love seat. And then you put the TV where the computer is. I don't know. D Dave, times like this, you gotta get creative. You gotta, you gotta think outside the box. You can't think inside the box half the time. You gotta, you gotta be experimental. Come on, dude. The office and have my PC slash internet set up over here to stream, and all my actual gaming stuff, consoles and the like, has to be on the other side of the room because that's where there's room for it. All right. Uh, could I rewire my entire house? Maybe, but it probably would cost a ridiculous amount of money. Money, money, money. In addition, even though I legally have the right to do that, uh, it would probably be a pain in the ass later on. Let's say, for example, I eventually have to sell my house. Well, now explain to someone why you had to tear the walls out and why there's three internet lines on one side and not the other. You know what I mean? Like, you want to try to keep the house congruent with all the other homes in the area. So if you try to sell it, it's attractive. Not, um, you know, not that. Sadly, you know, I have a house that's so different because I renovated everything for the business and I'm trying to sell it and now I can't sell it. You know what I mean? You know what um, I mean? Sound good. So that being said, there you go. Uh, there really is no way that I could better rearrange my equipment. <clears throat> Sadly. <clears throat> the only thing I could do, instead of using a monitor at all, all right, I could just play games only on my PC. And what that would entail is, number one, either buying a gaming PC to handle all the games that I play, which I, you know, I can't do that right now, or running even more wires. Oh, by the way, there's already two giant, oh, I take it back, three giant wires run across my whole office floor, running another wire across the office floor so that I could have, you know, the game set up only on my PC. And I would just be sitting, I would never be sitting here on the love seat ever again. I'd be sitting over there in front of my PC forever. Why don't you get a big monitor Put that on the little, on that desk or whatever, like the size of your TV, and you tilt the love seat the other way, 
I don't know. I, you know what? No, I'm, I'm thinking too much. Fuck it. And honestly, that's what a lot of streamers do. They only play games on their PC setup. I don't like that. I, when I sit down to game, all right, I've always been under the impression that gaming is supposed to be something that's comfortable, something that's entertaining and fun. And yes, I do this for a living, so it should be to a level of professionalism as well. What professionalism? But you I want to sit here and enjoy the game. So I want to sit on a nice love animal. seat over here with tons of space and room if I need to stretch my legs. Not that I'm on a cramped office setup, an office chair where there's no room to really relax or, or be comfortable. And I want to sit here and be able to have interaction with you guys on a, on a laptop and be, I have drinks in front of me and everything. This is a much better setup in my opinion, this is my personal opinion, that someone who's cramped in front of their PC all day. And I could attest to that. But the other they're... thing he could do, which is going to be insane, guys, get this. Why not move the laptop to the other side so he has the chat and the TV lined up? He could at least do that. He could at least do that. Come on. Come on, Dave. PC games that I play, in particular when I do like indie marathons and stuff, a lot of the games I play are on PC only. So I have to go sit there in front of my PC for the greater part are, you know, eight plus hours for a marathon. And by the end of the day, my neck's killing me. My back's killing me. My body. How is your neck killing? Dude, he, he's like a straight ahead. And he's like, oh, my neck's killing me. But when he's playing fucking Far Cry, look at that. He's like this. Oh, no, this isn't. This doesn't uh, hurt my neck. But sitting like this hurts my neck. Dave has a very weird body. I, I think he might need to go to the hospital. Because he has so many problems that are not normal. Body is sore as fuck, and I just didn't have a good time. I felt like, man, I really wish I could have just went and relaxed on my love seat and enjoyed games for what they are, an enjoyment, relaxing experience, rather than, oh, I had to be super serious and, oh, I'll be right in front of my PC constantly super and have serious. everybody go through my PC, all right? <laughs> now, you don't have that? to do that. An enjoyment, relaxing experience, rather than, oh, I had to be super serious and, oh, I'll be right in front of my PC constantly and have everything go through my PC. What? All right. Now you don't have to believe that. You know, you, you you could be completely, completely. All right, of the other mentality of okay. No, I I believe that that is the ideal setup. That's fine. But that's not my personal belief. I've always been more comfortable in the ten years that I've made videos for YouTube, and now in the five years that I've been live streaming, I've always done it like this, and I enjoy it this way. I really do. But you don't try to improve your setup, though. That that's the other thing. Like, yeah, you 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 could find. You usually try to find a setup that works for you when you stream or do videos, what ha what have you. You always try to find a set a good setup, but people always try to improve it. There's always room for improvement on your setup, and he just doesn't want to do it because that requires thinking and work, and he doesn't want to do that. Phone, 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 phone. Okay. Hold on, just got a text. He's gonna be on his phone. I'll be on my phone. All right. It was my girlfriend at work. All right. Um, so there you go, guys. Um, that's the situation with the whole office setup. I wish that I could change it. I wanted to when I first moved in. I wanted everything on one side. I was told you can't do it. So that's why how it is, why, how it is. Nothing I could the do. thing is, do you see any actual negative effect on my work? No, no one's ever said, oh, man, Phil's work seems like it's not as good because. Yeah, oh, yeah I do see a negative effect. You don't. You look like you don't care half the time when you fucking play a game. You're just like this. You went to sleep during Yakuza. But there's no, there's no negative effect. Okay. Oh, Phil missed something in Bloodborne. It's probably not because I was looking here. It's because I was looking at stream chat. It doesn't matter. There's no negative effect. I got hit. I missed something on, on uh, Bloodborne because I was looking at the, other, the completely different direction. That sounds like a, a negative thing from the setup, Dave. Wow, GG, he fucking addressed, oh, <laughs> I want to hear that again. No one's ever said, oh man, Phil's work seems like it's not as good because, oh no, Phil missed something in Bloodborne. It's probably not because I was looking here, it's because I was looking at stream chat, it doesn't matter. That's why the fucking question asks you to move the fucking setup around. The first thing he says was, oh, well, you missed treasure bugs in Bloodborne because you're looking at the chat. And then he says, well, I probably missed it, not because I'm looking at the TV, but because I was looking at stream chat. No shit. That's the fucking reason why he brought it up. Oh my god, what a fucking dummy. If stream chat is right here, or right here, or right here. If I'm looking at stream chat, I'm not going to see what's on screen in Bloodborne. You have peripheral vision. 
So you're, t okay, Dave, you're telling me that if you're looking at stream chat, you're not going to see the TV in your, in your peripheries? Are you, per is your, is your vision that fucked up? Dave, you might need to get your eyes checked. You might need to get another set of, set of glasses. You might, you know, he might need to get a new pair of glasses. His eyesight might be bad enough where you might need a new, a uh, new prescription of glasses. Maybe. Born period. So I'm going to miss stuff. Being an interactive streamer, I'm going to miss stuff. There's not much you can do about that, especially, you know, I've really done, uh, I've really tried to adapt over the last year and make it so that it doesn't affect it, but there's going to be times when I'm looking over here. Oh, here's a shout out. Here's me reading uh, off a of Twitch stream chat, and I'm going to miss shit in the game. There's nothing you can do. It doesn't matter if it was right next to it. If we were on the same fucking screen, I'd still miss it because I'm looking at stream chat. All right? It's just going to Yeah, he, he has no perfect vision, guys. Man, and he wanted to be a Shut he up. wanted to be a he wanted to be in the army, and he can't, and he has no situational eyesight. Okay. To your boy Bob who did a fifty bit cheer, he said, "What up, man?" All right. Another question from Planet Jeff. He says, "Do you have any good walking paths in your immediate neighborhood?" I live in a Phoenix. I don't suburb. care about this fucking question, TBH. For me, I there is a I, there is a a path. It's not that great, but it's decent. But there's other places that I might I might want to go to uh, for this kind of paths. But it is what it is. <laughs> uh, so this one's thoughts and advice for prepare. Uh, let's jump right in. So okay, my my opinion is is this study study obviously study. You want to study. You want to get uh, get stuff. But try to to look at at some of the things that you have to study and try to discern what might be important to know but also just relax just just relax you know you don't don't have to overthink things because sometimes when you get really stressed out over an exam you might you might overthink a question you know that happened to me a lot of times during exams i just had a recent exam for my biology lab uh 2 days ago and i was really i was I was studying, I was really nervous because I was like, oh man, there's a lot of diagrams I had, I had to study, there's a lot of stuff I had to study, and I was going through the exam, and I just kind of told myself, well, I need to relax, and I just need to go with what I think is right, I should write down just an answer that, that I think is correct, and then maybe think about it as I go on, but, you know, during this exam, I had to go to different stations, and I had two minutes, so I, I just had, there's like, you know, there's no time, not a lot of time to make a very a decision just go with what I think is right and what I studied so I would write down the answers and you know I'll try to go back later if I had time if I finished a question on time I would go back to another question I was unsure of but I just try to get get through for multiple choice honestly you might just want to go with your first instinct sometimes you you're uh, your your if you're not really sure of the answer your first instinct is always correct. I, for example, I have this question: uh, Which disease is, I think, curable? Yeah, curable. Which STD is curable? And the options were HIV, hepatitis B, gonorrhea, and herpes. And I was thinking, I was like, I know HIV and I know um, hepatitis B are not curable. I think they're both treatable, but they're just not curable. You'll, you'll never get rid of them. And I was like, okay, I know that. I know that's not the right answer. And I was torn between herpes and gonorrhea. And I sat there, I was like, and I worked on gonorrhea at first. I was like, oh, it has to be gonorrhea. Because I knew there was a, 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 a disease that I thought wasn't cure, that sounded, that it wasn't curable, but it is. And then there's one that was whatever. But then I was like, oh, it oh it's herpes. And then I, I finished the exam, I turned it in, I leave the exam, I look back at my PowerPoint, and I was like, it was fucking gonorrhea. That was the answer. And I was so fucking mad about that answer. I was like, I knew it was that. And I fucking second guess myself on it. Sometimes when you second guess yourself, it causes you to lose really dumb points. But you really have to go with what you think is correct. Uh, and never. And, and if you want to go over your answers, if there's time, do it. You know. Sometimes I I just continue going through the exam and I circle questions that I did not uh, finish. If I if I'm stumped on a question, I circle it. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go back to that later. I want to get through the entire exam first. And then go back to the questions that I didn't get, and then go back and double check my answers. I would recommend doing that if, if time allows, but it's better to get answers down first, so you so you just don't lose points because you didn't answer a question that you might have gotten.
hopefully that that answers your the question and hopefully you see where I'm coming from. Everyone has different uh The first question comes from the Warlord two K fifty. And the Warlord asks the following. I have a GCSE exam coming up in mid-May. I don't know what that stands for. I apologize. It sounds to me like a qualifying exam for some kind of school or whatever. All right. I am confident that I will be fine when it comes to the exams, but do you have any tips for revising? Do you get nervous when you have your exam? Oh, revising. I don't know what you call high school Okay, exam. revising, simple. Just go through the exam once. Just, just answer as many questions as you can. Go back to either uh, answer questions you didn't answer, or just go back and check your answers. You always want to go back and make sure you got everything and you understood the questions. Sometimes you might want to go back and reread the question, and that's fine. Take the time to do that. Don't just answer the the question then just okay I'm done you know I you know that might work for some people but I I like to kind of go back and make sure that I read the question I understood the question and make sure that I read it correctly the first time sometimes the way that exams are written might be to kind of trip to trip you up in thinking one way but it might be the other way so always keep that in mind exams in the states uh, so again okay he doesn't live in the United States it makes sense that I don't know what the GCSE is makes okay? sense. I already had some mock exams, and I have another set of mocks coming up in March. I'll be announcing a significant amount of time off from YouTube, and I'm revising the stuff I need to work on. All right. So his question is, do I have any tips when it comes to being confident for exam time, or just in, in particular when it comes to exams? Did I get nervous when I did my exams in high school? All right. So in high school, I had the SATs and the PSATs. The PSATs are known as kind of like the qualifying uh, test to see. No, how I don't want. I don't want to hear this. Th. Fuck it. I, 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 I don't want to hear this. Uh, story. Uh, was I a Nintendo or Sega gamer growing up? I was Nintendo. I was Shut Nintendo up. all the way until near the end of the GameCube PS2 cycle. I got a PS2. Well, my brother got the got a PS2 because he wanted to play Kingdom Hearts, and then I kind of went from there to be like, okay, I like PlayStation is kind of cool and. I am now a Nintendo PlayStation person. I was Microsoft for a while, but they fucked up with the Xbox One. Two, Jack Cooper the Plumber. He says, Phil, when you were younger, were you primarily a Nintendo or Sega gamer? Well, when I was growing up in the 80s, I was an Atari guy. I had an Atari 7800 system that my uncle had gifted me, and I played a bunch of Atari 7800 games. Then I saw that my cousins had a Nintendo Entertainment System, and I really wanted that, so eventually I got the NES, but very shortly after getting it, the SNES launched. And that was really when I got majorly into console gaming. The SNES was my go-to console with games such as Super Mario World, Zelda A Link to the Past, uh, Final Fantasy 4 and 6, Chrono Trigger, Earthbound, Super Mario RPG, uh, Street Fighter 2, <clears throat> among many, many others, okay? Um, but then, as I was enjoying the era of the success of the SNES slash Super Famicom in the United States... The Sega Genesis was also out, and I started seeing some really cool games on that. In particular, if you can believe it, where did I see them? At stores where they had kiosks showing off the Sega Genesis, and also at my local dentist's office. Wow. My dentist actually had a Sega Genesis set up in his office where kids could play while they were waiting to go into the dentist. And that's the first time I ever played Sonic the Hedgehog and Eco the Dolphin. And based Eco. off those games, I said, man, I've never seen graphics this blazingly fast. On the SNES, I would like to actually get Sonic the Hedgehog. So eventually, I, my, mm -hmm. I asked my parents for it, and I think it was either for my birthday or Christmas, they bought me a Sega Genesis. So I did enjoy games on the Genesis, like the Sonic series, the X-Men series, and I Neville rented many games for the Genesis over the years as well. But I would say primarily I was a Nintendo gamer until the PS1. And when the PS1 came out, Look it was it all this. about PlayStation. Most of the games that I played seriously, I played on the PlayStation. Then when the Dreamcast came out, that became my primary console for playing fighting games. Because almost all the games, including Marvel vs. Capcom 1 and 2, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, and Capcom vs. SNK 2 all had great ports that were played competitively on the Dreamcast. So that was my go-to system for the longest time. And then I kind of fell out of console gaming for a while. So, so your real answer would be okay. primarily I was a Nintendo gamer. Although I did have a Sega Genesis and a, a Dreamcast later on. During those formative years of gaming where I grew up with gaming, it was usually my SNES was the go-to system of choice for me. There you go. All right, there you go. Let's see uh, next question. Uh, ba, 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 ba. is there? Oh, oh my God, this one I I I don't even know if I want to bother with this, but okay. 
Is there any merit to saying that video games have caused actual in-life violence in recent string of American school shootings and the like? Recent shootings, no. I think... Uh, no, they're... It's just... It's... Just they have stuff going on in their mind. I mean, it's... It's a loaded question. It's a very loaded question. And to ask Dave this is... is... Alright, next question. From Dean Jones. This is a very interesting question that I wanted to address on this episode of Ask the King. So here we go, guys. Get ready. You already answered. Oh, by whatever. the way, shout out to Geronimoa. Oh, excuse me. Geronimoma, who did a 200-bit cheer and said, here's to the love couch. And Plague Wielder also did a 50-bit cheer. Thank you guys for your contributions during the stream. All right. Next question from Dean Jones. And he asked the following. Phil, with the recent shootings that have taken place in America... It got me to thinking about the stigma surrounding video games and their effects on everyone's mental health. <clears throat> a lot of people still believe <clears throat> that violence in games can trigger behavior that causes people to go out and commit mass shootings, for example. Do you think that video games play a part in the way that we think? Or like me, do you think the issue is far more complex than simply seeing something on a screen and carrying an action out in real life? I'd love to hear your opinion on this. Mental health is is pretty complex because a lot of, because we still don't fully grasp how the brain works necessarily i mean we have we have we have like you know studies of it we know how neurons work and how things are trans are uh, transmitted through the body etc we we have an understanding of that but there's a lot of stuff about the human brain that is complex we don't really have a good grasp of it that it makes us say that's what it is you know it, it's a lot of factors and conditions now a lot of people are, now he, he brings up like Oh, kids from broken homes or bad families or whatever, and that's not necessarily the case either, because a lot of times that that people have mental health, it could be something that they're born with. It could be something that you know the brain doesn't have sufficient chemicals in the in that the brain that the body might not be developing for it. Who knows what it is? So to really ask, well, to to really understand what causes people's mental health to decline or to to do this, do these shootings, it's really hard to to really have a good grasp on unless we do more studies of it. And the thing is that video games don't really tell people kill people. You know, there's really nothing that that's cor correlating with it. The only thing that you could kind of make the case for is that it might either validate or, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't even think that's the right word, but... I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe that's not the case. I don't know. I can't really think. It, I, okay, never mind. I'm gonna debate on that thought. But you know, it's 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 a really complex issue, and it's and it's just not that easy to say it's this, it's that. This triggers it. This this stimulates it. You never really know. And a lot of times, it could just be bullying. It could just be, you know, the kid might not know how to process certain thoughts that he's feeling. Uh, or it could be a misinterpretation. It could be, you know, a lot of a lot of things. And and there's really no true cause in the sense of like, you know, it's not like well, I ate a run, I ate, I drink milk that's expired. Now I feel sick. It's nothing like that where you have something that's a causation to it. It's a little bit more complex because the brain works very, very, very interesting. It's very interesting to to try to understand how the brain works and what how it processes things and because it's really abstract in a lot of ways. It's really hard to fucking answer this question without like you know, understanding the brain at a very competent level. Alright. So let's Ooh let's boy. give it an answer. Alright. This'll be good. I, I had a hard time answering Is the it absolutely true and that over the years there have been violent imagine, crimes that may have been in I have a, I'm having trouble answering that question. So just imagine the kind of answer we'll get from Dave. Ooh. Inspired and or even practiced within video games before they actually occurred. Yes. There's not def there's no denying that. As far back as the Columbine shootings in the late 1990s has been proven that those kids actually set up a virtual school in Doom. They created their own levels that looked like their school and ran through them practicing what they wanted to do. All right. So, yes. Now, now, I could have sworn. I don't know if this is the case, though. So, you know what? Don't take. Don't, so, take it with a grain of salt or correct me if I'm wrong. 
but I could have sworn I heard that that whole thing where they uh, made a mod about it was not true. I don't know. I don't know. I can't say for sure, but I could have sworn it was said that it was false. I don't know. There is an influence. There's a, there is a direct link there. Absolutely. But However. That's, but that's also you, different. That has nothing to do with the video game as they were just, they knew what they wanted to do before the video game was involved. Like they wanted to do the shooting. It wasn't that the game made them do it or that it inspired them to do it. They had the intention to do it. You need to do when you have situations like we have in the United States, you need to think logically and you need to think analytically. All right. And this is sadly what a lot of people don't do. They just say there's a correlation. That's it. Video games are to blame. Ladies and gentlemen, video games are now one of the biggest, if not the biggest industry in the world. They make more money than movies, music, television, and any other for radio, any other form of entertainment medium combined, they make more money. Video games are where it's at, all right? We have seen how many violent franchises of video games over the last 20 years, including games, I mean, let's call a few out, Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, Gears of War, a god of war just in particular think of the ultra violence ripping body parts off blood squirting chainsaws going through bodies right mass stealing cars driving people down in the streets mass gang shootings all this stuff is 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 allowable and happens all the time in video games all right it's true right Mil these games are million sellers every game that i mentioned the franchise is a million seller makes tons of money despite the fact that those games are ultra violent right they're, they're ridiculous selling True. Stealing cars drive out of war, just in particular. Think of the ultra violence, ripping body parts off blood, squirting chainsaws going through bodies, right? Now, the, now these examples. It's important to note that the people who are saying video games are to blame for the violence, they're not necessarily saying that the video games themselves, the video game itself is what's causing it. It's just that we look at, like, a lot of the people go to Grand Theft Auto because it's the most realistic uh, video game. God of War is not relatable or realistic because you're defeating mythology. You're, you're going and killing mythology, myth mythological beings. Not legit, not real. Like, no one's saying there's like, I'm going to get some chains and, and whip them around, you know. No one's really thinking about that. But with Grand Theft Auto, it's like, well, you know, you're going through a city in that game. You're driving a car. You know, you have guns. It's this whole thing about, about crime. and all that so that's a little bit more relatable in a, in a sense but i mean it's kind of outdated no one really thinks about that anymore right mass stealing cars driving people down in the streets mass gang shootings all this stuff is as the relatability is what the issue is not that it's a video game that has violence it's the relatability to what is being portrayed i think that's kind of what stems this this stigma about video games is because of that is is allowable and happens all the time in video games all right it's true right Mil these games are million sellers every game that i mentioned the franchise is million a million sellers. seller makes tons of money despite the fact that those games are ultra violent right they're, they're ridiculous sellers ladies and gentlemen since we saw games like those become million sellers and become the biggest thing in entertainment have we suddenly seen a ginormous epidemic of street crime are people running through the streets with ak-47s constantly shooting each other are people stealing cars and driving over people and starting gang wars in the streets around every street corner i don't think so does does crime happen yes but have we seen an exponential rise in the amount of crime and violent crime happening in the united states since video games and violent video games have become popular i don't know phil there are statistics that are showing that shootings have been increasing in fucking America. And, you know, already there there's uh, statistics out there saying that there's more shootings this year alone than there was last year and the year before. So, I don't know, Dave. You tell me with that data, what does that make you think? No, I mean, there are even people that are trying to associate these killings with, well, it's because of Trump. Trump's in the White House. That's why we're getting. The, and it's like, I I don't think that's the case either. I it all depends on 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 who you ask, what you ask, what what you think. Because there are, there's a rise in shootings. Just look at the fucking statistics. In fact, there's no direct correlation at all between the giant spike in popularity of video games and the amount of violent crimes that happen in the United States. There's none.
there's been no statistical study that proves anything between those. So when I hear pundits and politicians say, it's video games to blame, it's the desensifying, uh, uh, the de- de- desensitizing, excuse me, of our youth to violence because they're possibly playing violent video games. I say, dude, we've had violent movies, violent television, violent video games, violent music. Again, in the 90s, it was the gangster rap that apparently made all the kids violent, right? We've got all this going on. Yeah, we can't... But, like, they still talk... They do talk... They do bring up movies and TV shows still as, like, sort of violence. It's just that video games are a little more prominent because more kids get involved with them. But, uh... I mean, it's it's the same fucking shit. People... Like, why do you think people are, are trying to push censorship on the internet? Okay. We can't prove any direct correlation between any of it. We haven't, since these things become popular, we haven't seen a giant exponential rise in, in, in violence at all. I mean, you know, the thing that's funny, though, is that you can have violence in a PG-13 movie, but the moment you have sex, the moment sex is involved, M rating. Oh, not M rating. Rated R or even NC-17. But, oh, violence, that's okay. PG-13, that, that's okay. Okay. This is funny, funny thing. I'm sorry, you know, but I don't see people running through the streets with chainsaws chopping each other apart. It just, you know, if that happens, it's an anomaly and it's a crazy fucking person. Okay, person. who fuck, how many chainsaw killings have you had? Gun, bullets and guns are more probable because you can buy them. Like, that, that's the thing. That's why people have been trying to push for better gun regulation, gun control, all, all that stuff. Now, now if, you, if you disagree or agree with that, that's, that's on you. I, I th- I'm, I'm for uh, gun control because most of these shootings that, that have occurred are not from criminals or people that would go to the black market to get guns. These people are getting guns legally and committing these things. There might be exceptions or, de- or, or you know, stuff like that, but these people are getting guns legally. And they're doing these things. I mean, I'm not necessarily saying, let's take away guns. Let's just take everyone's guns away and, and, and burn them, ban guns, period. But, I mean, they, they, they do need to be uh, regulated. I mean, if we're willing to regulate the fuck out of drugs, we should be able to regulate the fuck out of guns. But, again, if you disagree with me, that that's that's fine. I'm not, I'm not gonna sit there and be like, oh, you guys are Nazis, dude. Okay, sound good? There you go. I'm not going to do that. that. That's ridiculous. All right. Now, what we do see is in the rare occurrence that a crazy crime happens. All right. If you actually look at these people and you analyze them, you'll find, gee, more than likely there's something wrong with them. Emotionally, they're unstable. They're from a broken home. And yes, maybe they... And the other thing is, is, is that just good control either? I'm not going to say it's just that. It's also the system itself. The FBI, that stuff. That shit needs to be... Uh, Fixed too because with the one of the last shootings, the FBI knew they knew the guy with the that the uh, shooter was fucked up, but they did nothing. So, you know, there you go. It, it's 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 a very complex issue with with in regards to that. Uh, but saying well, they come from a broken home is not necessarily true either because there have been people who went on mass shootings that came from a rich family. So it's not really a broken home. Or that it's these less fortunate people committing these crimes. It's it's personal health. It's how they're raised. It's it's a lot of a lot of fucking factors. You can't you you cannot really say it's one thing that that's causing it. it. It's it's a lot of things that are both you know environmental and uh, internal. It's a lot of a lot of fucking factors that have to be taken into account. But okay. They play video games, all right, and maybe they use that video game as an outlet, and maybe that video game even inspired their, inspired them to do what they do. But that's the exception to the rule. I don't the reason think that video person did the violent crime is not because they played the violent video game, but because they were. Already- I don't think. I I don't think that's the case. I don't think video games inspire it because they probably were gonna do some fucked up shit before. There's a, a documentary. I can't remember the name, but it's on YouTube. If I find it, I'll 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 tell you guys. But it's a documentary that that's asking that went around these families that have these kids that have these kind of um, behaviors that are that are alarming that might 
No, go, go, or they ask about people who have serial killers as kids. I don't know. It was, it was a, it's a very interesting documentary. And they were talking to these parents. And I was saying, well, you know, it's, it's a nightmare because I can't leave my uh, siblings alone. I, like, I can't leave my two kids alone um, by themselves because one of them might kill the other. They might have serial, they might have killer tendencies. And it's a nightmare. And it, it's, it's an interesting uh, documentary. It's an old one though. It's like a very old. So who knows how. Uh, current or accurate it is now, but it's an interesting documentary. It, it's it was uh, it, it it just goes into this whole thing where you know th th these kids just have something going on in their in their mind, and they just and it's just hard to deal with. And it's not really about broken homes or all they're fucked up in that all altogether. It's just that no one knows what led them there. But okay, fucked up in the head. Right? This, the problem is up here, not here. Taking this away from everyone does not stop those people from still being fucked up up here and still going through with something that's really messed up. So instead of this now being the scapegoat, we get rid of this. Next, it'll be TV. And then once the violent TV is gone, then it'll be the movies. Once the violent movies are gone, what's the next scapegoat? You know what I mean? And that's all it is, a scapegoat after scapegoat. Instead of dealing with the issue that someone's fucked up in the head, you could, what cause- You could tell DSP is so proud of this response. He is, like, so proud of himself with this. I mean, okay. Caused them to be fucked up, and what allowed them Excuse to me. have the ability to go on the rampage they went on and commit the violent crime they did. Instead, we want the easy answer. Let's censor video games and censor TV and censor music and censor- Get the fuck out of here. That's not even an intelligent, logical, analytical answer. That is, I don't want to actually work to fix the problem. I just want a quick fix band-aid on the problem and pretend like I did something to fix it. And that's what our politicians in America do, sadly. They don't want to actually go to work on fixing Because it's a lot of issues. Like like this whole thing. Like even gun control is a big is a big talking point because I mean that that's why I would tell people I tell people that, that I talk about this with is that I think there's nothing bad with having the conversation i think i think gun control is a worthwhile conversation to have i think discounting and saying no flat out no or saying flat out yes is not really beneficial to anyone i think having the discussion and talking about you know how far can we take gun control that, that is logical or makes sense the conversation itself is fine and that's what a lot of people are having i don't think that the reason why they're that government's not moving on anything is because they're afraid of alienating the people who voted them in you know that that's kind of the issue that trump is kind of facing as well because some people who voted for him are happy with, with what he's doing a lot of people who voted for him are also ha are not happy with what he what he's doing because a lot of people are saying that he's not going with what he promised or some people say he is it's this whole thing and he can't really sit there and be like we're doing this and then expecting everyone to be like perfect he they fixed it 100 percent. you know that's why like you know when uh trump said Wow, who would have thought healthcare is, is complicated? Because it fucking is. There's a lot of complicated things when you work within the system. It's None of these are easy fixes, but at the same time, you know, you things need to be done. But, you know, sometimes conversation is worth to have. You need to have conversations. Okay. The innate problem of why are so many people nuts today that they're going off and committing these violent crimes? Instead, they want to put the Band-Aid on it. Oh, well, if we just make it so that games are now regulated in a different way, games. magically all crime will go away. It's fucking ludicrous. It's stupidity. It's not going to solve anything. It's just very dumb. And I completely disagree with anyone who's going to come to me with a re rationale like that. Okay, you're going to tell me it's video games that caused it. Prove it. Find the statistic. Find the direct correlation of so many people committing violent crimes to video games. It's never existed. It doesn't exist. Because it's not true. It's it's bullshit. It's fluff. It's a way for them to spin things. It's fluff. So that you feel better. Oh, it's just because of them violent video games. It's not that there's some kind of crazy actual mental illness going through America with people and culture. And in general, things are fucked up to the point where people are just... Culture. So but isn't video games part of culture? worthless with themselves and so crazy they want to go out and kill mass people. We don't want to address that issue. Instead, it's the video games. Sure it is. All right. Anyway, shout out to Straight Cash Homie. We had a 245-bit cheer and said, Phil, I truly enjoy your play. I love the chat during this. The entire chat was like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Playthroughs of new games, but I think me and any others also like to see you do some retro games on...
Yeah, he's not doing retro games. Rip that idea. Uh, let's see. What inspired me to uh, to be a YouTuber? Uh, really here from M if his if his answer starts off with something good, we'll listen to it. All right, but uh, my answer to that is a lot of people are are gonna know this Mega sixty four. That's out of the way, and then Tevin. Uh, video content content inspired me to do, uh, do speed videos because of how chill they were, and I was like, ah, I should do some chill vids too. And there you go, there you go. Okay. Uh, so, so that's kind of what inspired me. What inspired me to be an artist was cartoons. I loved watching cartoons, and I was like, man, uh, drawing looks cool. MDC fan one hundred and one. He says, Phil, I've been meaning to ask you this for quite some time. What inspired you the most to become a YouTuber? Um, well, here's the thing. Never really was I in inspired to be a YouTuber. I never intended to be a YouTuber. Uh, would YouTuber. be someone known for putting videos on the internet and someone who would be make a living doing this. I never aspired to be. When I when I started putting videos on YouTube in 2008, the only people who were making a living doing it were vloggers, comedians, and I say that loosely, but comedians. But he did vlogs too on YouTube. He's He told us... That he did vlogging on YouTube because he knew people were getting paid for vlogging. So he did vlogging to make money. He said this in, like, you know, recent years, and he's also said in the past. So, okay. Indians, uh, or people who, like, were very hyper-focused on one genre or one focus, all right? Gaming was not monetizable overall on YouTube. You couldn't just put out gameplay videos and put ads on them. They didn't allow you to do that when I started on YouTube. It actually wasn't until late 2010, early 2011 when that became a possible thing to do and you could actually start making money playing video games on YouTube. So this whole thing didn't even become possible until I was already two and a half years into doing it, okay? That being said, mm -hmm. um, the reason I was inspired to do it... That's such a load of shit because he's like, well, I didn't think about doing this as a job. Then why, did you go why were you in videos back then talking about how you wanted to do this as a job? He was like... Man, no, I want to make this YouTube thing to and to make it to a job. I want to get paid doing this and then blah, 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 blah. He was literally talking about making YouTube his, his business. Now, I don't necessarily know, remember what time, but, or what year he did, he started making vlogs like that, but he did talk about it as when he got fired from his uh, company, how he wanted to make YouTube his job. He decided to do it, but he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to say that because you know, he doesn't want to be a fake gamer, dude. It was because I saw people like the angry video game nerd and the nostalgia critic. Guys who didn't have a big budget. Guys who didn't have a lot of crew. Guys who literally were shoestring... What, what, is that what it's called? Basically, low budget, you know, doing it by themselves kind of guys. Were able to just do silly video series on the internet okay. that were funny and inspiring. And they became incredibly popular based off of their talent and their passion rather than the high production values, the skill of video editing, tons of money and teams. But they had to learn how to edit videos though and they and they were good at editing videos when they started though, or at least good for that time. They didn't just record a video one take and then upload it. Does he, does he really think that the earlier AVGN videos, uh, James never edited them or something? Like, okay of people to edit it to look like a great high production tv show instead their stuff didn't look great but it was still hilarious and they became very popular because of it I and know. i was inspired by people like them to say you know what why uh, you know a lot of people tell me i'm funny they like to hear my my reactions or my That's commentary on stuff you know in particular at street fighter tournaments and the like i would comment when people were playing games and stuff. people really see, thought that was a funny guy so why couldn't i translate that into a video for youtube right and what i saw at the time in 2008 when i was deciding to maybe do a few videos for YouTube, most people who were doing gameplay weren't doing, number one, they weren't doing full playthroughs at all. Number two, they were doing walkthroughs where it was just like inform informative videos. It wasn't entertaining so much as here's how you beat this boss. Here's how you find this secret item, right? Very different from the kind of content that I put out. <clears throat> but you, and so bullshit, because you can watch his playthroughs and, and get uh, tips on how to play uh, play games and, sit and shit because he does 100% runs in all his games almost. He he finds all the secret collectibles. He finds all he does all the side missions. So he can literally use his videos as a walkthrough. He even tags his videos as walkthroughs. Okay. So I said, you know what? 
why don't I just record some stuff and throw some videos up of me just commentating constantly over games? And it really wasn't serious. I mean, a few of the, the first videos I ever did, I was drunk. I remember playing Mercenaries drunk. 2 and being completely rip and drunk and just doing commentary over bugs and shit that was happening during the game. And people loved those videos. They thought they were friggin' funny. Um, and now he's not funny. Now you know, and it just kind of came out of nowhere that people liked what I did because I was different. Here's a guy who's trying to do something different. different. He's not trying to copy off of everybody else. Mm -hmm. He's not trying to bite off of anyone else's idea. He's just doing honest commentary of like a Joe Average guy. Oh, really now? Doesn't really care about the seriousness of the video game. He's just commentating over it, even having drinks and stuff, doing jokes, improv comedy, just being a funny and, and being fun and having fun with games. And a lot of that wasn't present on YouTube back then. So boom it exploded with viral popularity and next thing you know for two and a half years it became my hobby and i was well known for doing it i became the ultimate underdog of a guy who the really had no underdog. editing talent no real production value and certainly no budget to do anything but was able to get viral popularity on youtube because i was just entertaining or and then game the system because he kept reclassifying his genre like oh i'm a comedian oh i'm an entertainer he kept changing the vlog the um uh, genre of video he was doing when i lost my I job in late was. 2010 people felt wow this is really fucked up he was just doing an office job for a living this was his hobby and now they dump him in his office job out of nowhere they lay him off and now he's supposed to figure out what to do for a living let's support him and so then you beg for people to give you money i mean like the very first uh i'm gonna try to find it if i can't find it, i can't find it because this video will be long as fuck as oh. never mind i'm not gonna bother with that but he fucking begged for people to give him money. Oh, guys, I, I lost my job. And this is that. and it was like the most heartfelt video that he uploaded ever in, in, this, in his career, <laughs> to be honest. Oh, because I watched it. I watched it like a while ago. And I was like, you know what? This, this video, you know, I, I would actually feel bad for him if I didn't, if I didn't know who, what he became. Now when he does the drama vlog, it's just, guys, I, uh, uh, I need to pay my taxes cats in the house now guys and and i don't know i don't know if i'm gonna be able to keep my house okay and it's just fucking garbage i was able to start monetizing videos on youtube and the rest is history that i was able to make money doing this for a living but i never aspired to do it never once in my life did i say man i see these this guy on youtube and he's popular. I want to be like that. I want to be the guy who puts out gameplay videos every day and makes a living doing what he loves. Never, it all just kind of happened. It all just kind of happened and fell in my lap. Yeah, it just happened. Is that why you didn't search for another job at that time? I mean, like, he, he, he lost his job. And usually you would expect someone to, you know, apply for other jobs when you lose or quit a, a job. You, you would assume he would try to apply for other jobs, but he didn't. And then he made a video talking about how he wants to make YouTube his career, basically. Okay. It was never something I planned and never something I even aspired to work toward. It just happened on the fly. What yeah, a crazy story, fly, because guys. a lot of people I know in modern days, right? Well, I saw other people doing it, and I wanted to work hard and dedicate myself to become a big guy, so I grinded for two years streaming on Twitch. But you literally just said, though, that... You saw the nostalgia critic, you saw the, the AVGN, you saw people uploading walkthroughs and not playthroughs, and they, and people were saying how you were funny you were, and why not make into a, into a, uh, com a video on YouTube, dude? You literally just said that. And now you're saying, I, I don't do that. Okay. Until finally I got noticed, and now here I am, I'm the top Fortnite streamer, right? I think that's kind of the, the rags to riches story of Ninja, is that he was just a kid who wanted to play games How on do you know that that's the story of Ninja? He just fucking played Fortnite. How do you know? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna grind on Fortnite and I'll get popular that way. How do you know that was his train of thought? Okay. Saw other people doing it, and he just wanted to work his butt off, and eventually, through hard work, became successful. That's really not even my story. My story is just craziness and zaniness and yeah. Luck. I just lost my job, and and then I made a video saying how I lost my job, and it was really sad time for me, and people gave me money. Crazy story, right? Okay. And just things falling into place. So there you go. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Uploading videos is not grinding at all, right? Okay. 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 Um. All right. Do we have time for? Yeah, we have time for one or two more questions. There you go. There you go. Okay. So, what are the other questions? What are my favorite cartoons of the nineteen nineties? Ooh. Ooh. 
you know, I was born in 1990, if you guys didn't know. It's a crazy time of, of the, it's a crazy time. Uh, you know, I watched, I was watching the documentary and stuff happened during the 1990s. It was crazy. Uh, but 1990, oh boy, I was born, and that's when the world changed for however you want to view it. Uh, so my favorite cartoon, uh, I think it was like Ren and Stimpy. I liked that for a while. Batman the Animated Series, which he's going to say. Uh, that was like really good. I, I stay tuned to every episode. My favorite episode when I was a kid during that was the one with Hardak. Creepy episode. Fucking love it. I did not see Silk on Soul when I was a kid. I wish I did because that, I don't know what would have happened to me if I watched that. But that was a good episode when I just recently watched it. Uh, and I also like the episode of The Mechanic where Batman's car is fucked up. That one to me was so cool because it was like, you know, I love the Batmobile design and the animated series. And then Batman was like, oh, fuck, I, what's going on in here? And I was just like, oh, shit, this is his, his own car is going to kill him. And it was so cool. I loved it. So there you go. <laughs> Sound um, good? Shout out to Tyler Simba, who asks the following. He says, I don't know if anyone will ask you this. Do you miss any cartoons from the 90s? What was one of your favorites? If you have one, multiple is okay too. Keep up the good work. The 90s were a very tumultuous time. Lots of things changed. You had Saturday morning cartoons that were super popular, but then you had 3D animations that were coming out at the same time. I don't remember 3D animations into the in the line 1990s. Line. For me, when I think overall my best favorite cartoons of all time, I would probably say Batman the Animated Series, and then Gargoyles was on TV at the Gargoyles. same time. So it was the X-Men cartoon. All of those, because they were all kind of comic book style cartoons that brought the comics to life in a very serious way they took the character seriously it wasn't like silly cartoonish nonsense that didn't matter they had ongoing plot lines that continued through the show well the anime series did have serious moments but it had like a lot of goofy episodes too i mean you're really gonna tell me the the one where um the joker uh took this big pile of trash that it made people laugh was, was a serious episode i mean it had Fucking Captain Clown. The Christmas episode was a serious episode where, where uh, Batman uh, thwarts Joker's Christmas episode. I mean, you can't really say that the animated series of Batman was 100% serious and mature when there was a lot of goofy shit in it, but it was a good balance. It was a good balance of it. So there you go. Sound good? And treated the, the character seriously. And then... After that came game, um, c cartoons like Justice League and stuff like that that I thought were the best. So that's honest answer. I, mean, I can go into a ridiculous amount of details about the ridiculous amount of cartoons. The Disney Afternoon and stuff that I used to watch in the 1990s. And on Saturday mornings, you'd watch the new hot cartoons and Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers and I Transformers like Beast Wars. I, 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 I kind of did. A million but... things that I've seen over the years. But for me, those are the ones that stand out. Was like those DC Comics cartoons were like the best, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Shout out to Yolo Dopper. He's, I think your whole YouTube journey in general has been a zany one with ups, its ups and downs. I agree. I totally agree, Yolo Dopper. Ups and downs? But I thought Yolo Dopper was a troll, dude. Lo he, he, he goes to Red Lobster. Red Lobster, the, the, the uh, detractor place. <laughs> All right. Would I play Street Fighter V or Kay Edition or Killer Instinct if someone gifted them to me? Well, I don't, I, don't, I, don't have, I don't have anything to play Killer Instinct on, and I own Street Fighter V or Kay Edition, so... Um, there you go. The next question is from Cisco Certified. And he says, Phil, you said one of the main reasons you no longer play Street Fighter V or Killer Instinct is because so much of the content is behind a paywall. If I or anyone else were to send you the PC versions of Street Fighter V Arcade Edition or KI yeah, with everything else, Phil, you said one of the main reasons you no longer play Street Fighter V or Killer Instinct is because so much of the content is behind a paywall. Street Fighter V is kind of, well, it kind of is, but you could earn money to unlock everything except for some costumes if i or anyone else were to send you the pc versions of street fighter 5 arcade edition or ki with everything unlocked would you play them again i don't even know where you're getting your information cisco certified maybe that was one thing i referenced in a random video at some point maybe killer instinct okay said that. but that is not the main reason killer instinct i stopped playing because the net code was proven to be fucked up it was proven to be that the game would desync and things you would do on one side of the game were not happening on the other side and at that point, I just got completely turned off from the game and never wanted to play it again, all right? Now, apparently, apparently, eventually, they fixed it. They had other seasons, but I just didn't care anymore. Street Fighter V, I just hate the game. The game itself innately was designed didn't even play the to game. be a non-reactionary style game. A game where all you do is you have patterns and uh, strategies that are not 
like a typical fighting game. But Freak- you can kind of, but every fighting game has patterns technically because you have to know because if you're reacting to shit, you're like, okay, well this person jumps, I'm gonna do it. Sure, you can. Then this, you're always doing patterns in fighting games technically. I mean, combos are patterns. Oh, C's, reactionary anti airs, all things that used to be giant parts. Of there are reactionary anti airs. With Falk, if someone is trying to jump at me, I just do the uh, double punch move, and she just, you know, pokes up in the air and that knocks them down. That that's a reaction. Games are really not present, or at least weren't present in okay. the first year and a half of Street Fighter V gameplay. Maybe that whole thing has changed now, and I don't give a shit. I'm not going back to a game that for a year and a half was terrible and I don't like. So Tevin brings brought up a good point. I was watching a stream of this, and he said something that that was that I didn't even think about. When it comes to the DSP, he always says, "Oh, you gotta give me a chance." Oh, you know, you watch me one time, and you, and you fucking think I'm a piece of shit. Well, give me a chance. I I might I've changed over the years, dude. But then uh, Street Fighter Five. Oh, I changed over the years. No, fuck that game. First impressions matter. Okay, first impressions matter for him, but not matter for the game, but not for him. Okay. The reason I don't play those games is because I don't like them. Not because, oh, they're hidden behind a paywall. But, I, I mean, don't ever remember. I guess to a degree, the only difference you could kind of say, maybe, is that with a game, it's like an experience that and you paid money for. And it's like, you know, you, you could get burned pretty bad with that. Like, I got burned with Ubisoft after... Uh, after um, uh, Rainbow Six Siege. I ha- that game just I hated it. it. I was like, okay, I'm not buying Ubisoft games again. I bought Watch Dogs too, and I kind of regret that too. But I got that when it was on sale. I waited for that game to be on sale, but I still w- I still wish I had my money back. Uh so there's that. And then what else? Oh yeah, but then so so with the games, I could kind of see that. Uh but when it comes to streamers, I mean, I guess you could say like, well, you could always visit a streamer. Without investing money, but you're investing time. On the other hand, again, it, it, I guess it depends. But I mean, I just feel like you could see it either way. Maybe I don't know. Going into an elaborate rant about oh everything's hidden behind a paywall. I don't think that's the case. In fact, Street Fighter Five, if you play the hell out of it, you can earn enough in-game credits to unlock in-game. all those characters for free. At least that used to be like that. I don't know if it still is. It still is. Um, is, it, is this more? Pitch but yeah, I just don't really care about those games anymore sorry you know everyone says there's a chance for a first impression street fighter 5 there's a chance for a first impression there's no that that's not the saying it's that first impressions are are i I don't know either but first impressions are important a chance of first impressions is uh. possible first impression for a fighter and i never want to play the game ever again period okay sorry you could be hype. You could like the game. You could say the game's different. I don't care. I'm never playing it. I just don't care. I have no desire to ever play it. Every time I look at the game, I, I get Rrr. I get turned off. Rrr. But I guarantee he still would not like it. I guarantee because he would go into that game hating it, and he's gonna hate it. So there's really no point of expecting to play Street Fighter Five. For me personally, I don't. I I only wish he he would go back to Street Fighter Five so I could get a rematch with him. And I also want to see his reaction to Abigail. I, I, I'm just curious to see what he would say about that character. <laughs> okay, Um, I think we got time for one more question before we, we go on a break here. Well, whatever. Uh, I mean, it, it'd be kind of weird to ask him now. And he's like, oh, well, Abigail is Street Fighter Five, stupid. My full thoughts on anyone, media or not, get... Oh, God. <laughs> this. My full thoughts on anyone, media or not, getting... Early pre-release copies of video games. It's fine. That's my my opinion on it. So this question is from Melancholy Panda. <laughs> who cares? And Melancholy Pal- like, <sighs> who cares if they get early copies? I, I don't give a fuck. Because to me, it's like, they're, if they're paid off, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out in the review, if you read it. Like, if you read the review, and it's like, oh, this game, it's so good. It's amazing. Uh, you know, I am able to... Walk down the street in the game, beat people up. It's great, great variety, earth breaking, uh, ground breaking stuff, and it's it's a fucking third person shooter. It's like, it's like it, it it's just like you could tell that the uh, the review is like kind of skewed. But you also see it when it's genuine. It's like yeah, you know, like God of War is good, 
I got early, but it's, it's good. I think the only issue I have with it is that there's not a lot of aerial combos that are in the, that are present in the other games. Whatever. Uh, you can kind of tell when when a review is skewed or not. Let's try this again. Melancholy Panda asked the following. Phil, recently, with your receiving a review copy of Extinction, you talked a lot about how reviewers are getting games ahead of time and, it, and it's elitist and wrong. But it's you always talk about and it's in not context. wrong. It's elitist if these people are going around saying, I'm the best because they get the early game releases. But no one thinks that. The only person that thinks that is Dave because Dave thinks that about himself all the fucking time. Like, he projects about it because... I, because you know, you know he would brag about getting early advanced copies of AAA releases. Just go back to the Fallout 4 vlog. He was like, I got the contract. I got the contract, guys. I, it's right here. I got it. Fallout 4, baby. It's here. This is Fallout 4, okay? Fall, Fallout 4 right here, okay? I got it early. Here's the game case. Look, I got it early. I got it on Xbox One. Isn't it amazing? I'm going to play it on Monday. Now, no, they said in the contract that it's okay to stream it, so I'm going to be streaming it a day early. Is that amazing? Oh, boy. But, uh, now he doesn't do it because he can't get early covers of AAA releases. So instead of, of, like, you know, being whatever about it, he's like, they're elitist. They are. They are the big dogs. They, they are the ones that are... They are elitist in this and that one. He's elitist himself. And you know <laughs> This is a good face, PBH. <laughs> it's like, okay. Next of live streaming. Could you elaborate on your feelings about reviews in general? I agree that streamers getting early copies is bad because they're obviously going to want to please the publisher to keep the pre-release stream dollars coming for future titles, and they're eventually essentially just being paid to stream an ad. But actual reviewers like Polygon or Giant Bomb get the game, and then we see their official review. That seems fine to me. Listen, first of all, I don't agree with anyone getting games early, period. There was a time when it made sense. That time was the 1990s, folks. And the 2000s. Before the era of the internet, when game media companies needed to get a game early so they could play it, finish it, and review it fully before their magazine or publication needed to go out. Game Informer, Game Pro, EGM, just... I just like that he says this, but he does not at all think... He doesn't use his brain, dude. He doesn't realize that these reviewers review a lot of fucking games that come out from... Big releases to small releases. And in order for them to get to through all of these games, they need to get games early so they could have time to review all the games before the game comes out. Doesn't think about that. You know, he would he would probably have more of a point if he's just talking about streamers in general. Just 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 streamers that are not reviewers and, and just play games. He would have a point with that. Technically, he could make a case for it. But reviewers need it early because they want to review a lot of games for their readers. But okay. Just a few of them that needed to get those games early so they could play them, review them, and give you a print review. So on release day, you'd get you buy the magazine. Oh, wow. It says here that, uh, you know, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi. All my pig roach says, Hi, Phil. I've been a fan since 2002. I just wanted to ask, is this the same hat from 10 years ago? Island is a great game and I should play it and incidentally it came out today so now I know if I want to go and uh you know if I want to uh, banning him. buy that game Get or that not release it, right <laughs> you can literally tell he banned him you saw the cheer banned ladies and gentlemen it's 2018 we now have the internet, we now have the ability, all of us, to share our experiences live. We could live stream our games, we can review games within a day or two of release. We no longer need... Really? A day or two? Hold on. And, uh... The internet, we now have the ability, all of us, to share our experiences live. We could live stream our games, we can review games within a day or two of release. Okay, so where's the review of God of War, Dave? It's been like a week, and you didn't review it. You just said you could review games within a, within two days. And you didn't review it, Dave. Come on. Why didn't you review it? Oh, because you have to beat it first. But you just said you could review a game in two days. We no longer need anyone on the planet to get a game early ever again. What we need is self-control. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we as a gaming community need to start exercising self-control. And what that means is uh... instead of running out and buying into the hype and all the media and marketing that happens around game releases and believing every possible fucking positive thing that's said about a game here and there, all right, instead of all that, we start to be mature. And we realize maybe we shouldn't buy into all that stupid shit and we don't need to play. You fucking bought a Switch because they released Street Fighter 2 on the Switch. And you're lecturing us about self-control. Okay. Now a lot of people bring up, oh, well he buys every game day one. Okay, you know, that's a fair point. That is a fair point. I'm not going to discount that. But I will. I would say that Technically, it is kind of his job to play all the games on release, I guess. You could make that point. I think that's that's a fair statement to to a degree. Uh, but, I mean, at the same time, I think it's also open for that criticism. But when, I, when he was like talking about the Switch, he was like, well, I don't need the Switch. You know, I'm going to get Zelda Breath of the Wild on the Wii U. You know, there's really nothing on the Switch I want just yet. Et cetera, et cetera. Nintendo announces Ultra Street Fighter 2. <gasps> I pre-ordered the Switch. I'm getting it, guys. I'm getting it. But he's telling us about self-control. Okay, okay. He uh, could not wait to play Dark Souls 3 when everyone got the game. and said he wanted to get two weeks in advance. His rationale about it was, Well, I gotta beat the other people because it's competition. Okay. Then when he's talking about uh, his Nino, Nino Kuni 2 stream, he was like, Well, I could get early games, but I don't want to. It's easy, but I don't want to because I want to be honest. But I need money. Okay. Play every fucking game on release day. We don't. We don't. As gamers, we need to become more informed, we need to become more intelligent, and we need to become more reserved with where we spend our gaming dollars. Because what happens is we buy into the hype, we buy into the bullshit, we run out and we buy games that are just online cooperative experiences. The only reason the game's good is because you're playing it with your friends. If you try to play it by yourself, the game's a stinking piece of shit. And we make these games giant million sellers that then... Okay, I want to hear that again. ...that are just online. We need to become more intelligent and we need to become more reserved with where we spend our gaming dollars. Because what happens is we buy into the hype, we buy into the bullshit, we run out and we buy games that are just online cooperative experiences. The only reason the game's good is because you're playing it with your friends. If you try to play it by yourself, the game's a stinking piece of shit. And we make these games giant million sellers. We buy into the hype of these co-op games, but... Far Cry 5 is a single-player game as well. That got hype. God of War 4 is hype, and people bought that game. And I like how he looks like a beaver in this. In this. <laughs> Fucking dark side beaver over here. Uh, but, I mean, come on. Really, co-op games? Oh, we buy into the hype of co-op games. Yeah, because clearly no one wants to buy a game and play with their friends, right? Everyone is single and alone. They have no friends. They... Okay. Okay, Dave. Sellers that then tells the game industry, we don't want robust single-player experiences anymore. Instead, we just want online grinding co-op garbage. That makes no sense. For many reasons, by the way. But I'm going to say this. Buying... Let's say, like, Monster Hunter World. Does that mean that we're going to get Monster Hunter World 2 and we're going to get more Monster Hunter clones coming out in the future? No. Uh, Destiny is selling as much as it did. Does that mean we're going to get more Destiny-like games? No. I mean, it might mean that more companies might make games like that, but at the same time, when you look at, like, God of War, that sold a lot. Nier Automata sold a lot. Persona 5, I think, also sold a lot. Uh, it's not really... The success of these co-op games is not going to remove other games. And it's funny because in this video, because I watched this video ahead of time, I know, sorry guys, but I did. Uh, he was later on mentions, well, I, there's space for every game to, to survive here. Well, well, since co-op games are succeeding, that's all we're gonna get. But single player games do just as well. Okay. That's not the way to go, all right? What we need to do Instead of relying on everyone getting the game early and people have entire playthroughs of God of War out two weeks early, which happened. You could watch the entirety of God of War on YouTube two weeks early. People were streaming it weeks early. People's reviews came out early. What the fuck? Instead of that, how about on release day, we all play the game together and you either take that $60 leap 
or you wait a day or two for people who took that $60 leap and are live streaming. Okay, a few things about that though is $60, $60 is a lot of money. I mean, it's not devastating. It's not like, oh, I spent $60, I, lo I lose the house. It's nothing like that. But, you know, you, if you're spending $60 on a game, you kind of want to make sure you're getting a game that you're going to play a lot of. You know, because you have you have a game that's $60, that's new. You could get that, or you could get an old-ass game that might be on sale, and you're, and you're just wondering, okay, which one should I get? Should I get this $20 game or the $60 game? I heard good things about this $60 game, but I don't know if I'd like it, but this $20 game looks interesting, and it's $20. Mm. Excuse me. So a lot of people want to know if it's worth it, and this whole notion of, waiting for people to, to uh, buy it kind of works on paper but at the same time it's just like you know you have to wait until they get to a part that you might not want to spoil like a lot of people might not want to watch the intro of a game they might want to see like the middle of it because you know it's like okay we're, i'm just well, i just want to see the combat so you know waiting you, and people just don't know how long the intro is going to be before they get to the combat like if, if i were to sit here and be like i, I want to Watch a stream play Yakuza Six before I uh before I buy it to see if I like it. You know the intro. If I watch the intro, that's not really gonna dissuade. That's not gonna sway me to buy it because it's like, okay, I have to sit through hours of cutscenes, and then when I get the game, I'll have to sit through the same cutscene again. You know, like that's why it doesn't really work. Like if that that way, if someone uploads the, either the full game or whatever, I can go to the middle part of the game and say, oh, this is the combat. Okay. You know, and waiting waiting a few days can make or break it for me. And it's like, okay, well, I might want to take the plunge and then get disappointed. And the other thing is that a lot of games do have these limited deals. Like Persona 5, for example. I had no idea about Persona 5 other than I knew it was a series that a lot of people liked. And it came with this, tin, this nice tin case. And it's like, ah, oh, this case is limited. I don't want to miss out on getting a game I might like. And you have a nice case on top of that, you know. So I bought it, and then I loved it. I just bought it on, on chance, sure. But at the same time, it's like, you know, it, would I? what would I have felt like if I bought the game and then I hated it? I would, probably would have been like, what the fuck did I do with my money, you know? And are going to review the game for the internet to share their experiences with you and say, here's what the game is. Now judge for yourself if you want to play it. No, instead, we all have to be mindless That's automaton. That's why I, I had more control over God of War. Uh, because I was like, there's really nothing that I want day one of the, for that game. I ended up getting it eventually because I was like, yeah, you know, the combat looks really good and all, and and so on and so on. And that's really what I based that judgment on. But if it's a game like, as I said, with Persona Five, I kind of would want to want to know immediately if I if I would have liked this game than just waiting for time to to tell if I'd like it or not. And then when I go to the store to buy it, the uh, nice tin case is gone who go to Metacritic a week before a game's out and look for a number score, and if the number scores above our arbitrary judgment of if a game... But Metacritic is more fair and balanced because the users vote in and you could read the review. You could tell easily what re what Metacritic score is is reviewed by fanboys. Easily. It's, it's like, you would have to be, like, dumb to, to not see it. Like, come on. If game's good or not, then we go fucking buy it on release day. That's insane! Insane! That's insanity! But what's the difference between watching it, people play it ahead of time than watching it later? That makes no fucking sense. They're still buying into the hype regardless. Okay. It's different. That's crazy. That's called, I want no intelligent thought in my fucking life. No responsibility for my actions or judgment. All I want is to judge off a number score of a cumulatively aggregated website of reviews. What the fuck? Is that how you want to go through life? So in every time... But it's not even by a number, though. People don't go by the number by itself. People read the fucking review, dummy. I'm in your life, an issue comes up. When you need to vote for a politician, don't actually read into the, the, the arguments yourself. Don't read what they stand for. Just listen to the common opinion of who's good and who's bad. And just... We are really comparing politics to fucking video games? You don't even vote, Dave. You don't even vote. Vote based on that instead. Okay. Oh my god. Like, seriously. I think people being lazy is what it is. You can't. You can't go lazy. through life being that like that, guys. You can't. And the bottom line is, these media outlets only exist. IGN and GameSpot. Ladies and gentlemen, 
serve no purpose. They are outdated dinosaurs. They really don't need to exist. When you've got independent I, people I love only exist, IGN and GameSpot, ladies and gentlemen, serve no purpose. They are outdated dinosaurs. They really don't need to exist. I love every time he does this, he, he's always... Like, what the, what the fuck is that? They don't need to exist, dude. Come on. When you've got independent people who play these games at launch, who review them, and are way more honest and professional about it than a lot of the big guys who get paid big money to be big advertisement. Wow, companies. what a thing to say to Venomous Fat Man, Dave. Uh, you know what? I, I'm, I'm, I, I just, uh, man. Venomous Fat Man wants to, like, play Street Fighter with him, and he's saying that he's unprofessional, dude. Wow. IGN and GameSpot, who are dependent on ad revenue from these game development companies, you don't need them anymore. You they serve anymore. literally no purpose. You go to the website, it's cluttered, it's nasty, they're covering all kinds of garbage pop culture that has nothing to do with games. The fuck am I here for? You know, whatever happened to gaming journalism? And the answer is, it sold out. Game gaming journalism so sold out. Because it's not like that gaming journalism, these, these websites have staff members that might need to get paid. Maybe I don't know. I I'm just assuming that they that they have people that they need to pay for their job, and it's not really selling out. Like with that logic, you sold out, Dave, because you got Extinction early, you got games for free before, you're you're a partner on Twitch, you get paid to play video games. I mean, you could make the same case about you. Okay, Dave. Gaming journalism sold out to the highest bidder and is now cow toes to the whoever needs ad. Gaming journalism is now cow toes. They are now cow toes, guys. Revenue and whoever's going to continue to send them saying? the advanced copies early. It's bullshit. It doesn't need to happen anymore. We don't need official gaming journalist agencies ever again. We have enough people independent on the internet covering games. We don't need gaming journalism, period. It doesn't need to exist. We don't need reviews of a game a week ahead of time before the fucking game comes out. We just need to be responsible adults and not run out and buy the fucking game on release day. Wait one to two days. Listen to people who did get out. Okay, but what if you're getting a gift for your son, let's say, and, you know, you need to make a decision the day of release. I don't know on the internet get their opinions watch their streams watch their videos okay this looks good now i'll go buy it instead of oh joe schmo who's a big streamer got the game a month ahead of time and is doing an exclusive stream he got rights to stream the game two weeks ahead of time and streams the whole fucking game so the whole playthrough spoiled on, on the internet two weeks early wow this is really productive for everyone right that's what i hate it's bullshit i hate it it really bullshit, is dude. fuck you <laughs> it really is and i'm sorry to say you know again it's it's I'm tired of no one this because of the guys. amount of irresponsibility that there is out there when it comes to advanced copies of games. I don't believe a single person should get uh, advanced copies of games, period. I just, I'm 100% staunchly against the practice. It's always been my opinion. There you go. Then why did he get another copy of Extinction? Oh, oh no, guys. He, he played it on release day, so he, so it's different. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So we got a few... Uh, 40, uh, we got a few cheers for 44k Panda. We got a few troll cheers I'm going to ignore, by the way. But 44k mm -hmm. Panda said, You say you're against reviewers getting games early, but some people make purchasing decisions based on those reviews. Word of mouth is the best way for people to know if they should buy a game. How can people be well informed that there's no one to take that first plunge? I just explained. We don't need early, we need day of. On the day of release, people are undoubtedly, for streams and for YouTube, going to buy the okay, game. Okay, so you're telling me that if I go to Best Buy, I'll be able to watch a stream to know if I want a game? Like, I would have to was, was sit in that store for so long to watch a stream to get an idea of if I want the game or not. That's fucking stupid. On top of that, if it's a big release game that's high in demand, if I come and have to wait, I'm sitting at home watching a stream of it, do you think, you know, have the time, I might not be able to get it. Okay. If it's good or bad, because they're going to stream and they're going to make money on the streams and money on the YouTube videos. So let those people take the plunge. Share with you their They make money. Let them take the plunge. So, so wouldn't that make them less honest then? Because they could just buy trash, say whatever they want about the trash, because they could just make the money back on, on, uh, on stream.
okay. experiences okay. with the game. And based off of that, now you can make an informed judgment. Not you need to know a week of fucking head of time. Just wait a day or two after release, and then there's literally no reason for these big gaming news outlets to ever exist ever again. Overnight, they'll go out of business. Overnight, all Overnight. the bullshit hype for terrible games that are only okay. good because of ad because marketing. Clearly, IGN and GameStop games will only make money off of reviews. Clearly. They, they don't do any other kind of journal, journalism. They don't do previews. They don't talk about upcoming games or do interviews. No, 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 no. They only do reviews. Okay, Dave. In campaigns creating hype around them, those games will no longer be successful. And all of a sudden, overnight, all the ahead of time, just wait a day or two after release games that are only good because of ad marketing campaigns creating hype around them those games will no longer be successful and all of a sudden game studios will actually need to have talent again to sell a game no because here's the issue here's the issue dave here it is if a publisher cannot make a make you know market their game well or at all, and they and they can't get any positive word of mouth. They're not going to be very experimental or take risks with their games. They're gonna play it safe. We'll see more Call of Duties. We'll see more of those kind of games. We'll see more of Destiny's dude because they don't. They would not want to take the risk because publishers, as it is, as it is, is already trying to make their money back in their. And game development, they already want to do that, and the most experimental games that are out, it's like a way out, that kind of stuff, have to fight so hard to, to uh, get released. Uh, you know, Indivisible almost could not, was almost not funded because they had to rely on crowdfunding to make that game possible. Skullgirls was also crowdfunded. Do you think if Lab Zero went to Capcom or whoever and said, "Hey, do you want to make Skullgirls?" They might say no because why would I? Why would I want to p spend money on a game development that might not pan out or or get my money back? Konami kind of treated Skullgirls like trash because Konami could not make their money back on it. So if this, so let's say that gaming journalism dies. Okay, no one's getting advanced copies anymore and all this kind of stuff. Do you think that EA, Activision, Konami, Capcom is going to start taking risks with their game with their games? No, a lot of games are either going to die out because not a lot of people knew that the game exists and and they might not get their money back because they, they only care about the launch of the game. They don't care about the long-term support of the game, which is whatever, but, you know, why do you think, like, look at Yakuza, for, uh, for example. That game franchise had a hard time being released in, in the States because, like, around Yakuza 3, people kind of hated the localization of that game. And Sega was like, I don't know if we should, if we should continue releasing Yakuza in the West. Later on they started releasing them and they only released them subbed because it was cheaper. They don't want to take risks on games if they can't make money on it. So if that happens, game developers will not take risks, they will not make artistic games, and we won't see that anymore. We'll see safe budgeted games. Look at the movie industry. Why do you think we see a lot of comic book movies? It's not because Marvel is an experimental company that wants to try new things. It's because it brings in the money. Because it's going to be dependent on you and me and the common gamer to spread the word about those games being good across the internet to get people to buy them instead. Yeah, look at Annihilation. I loved Annihilation. That's a really good movie. A lot of reviewers love that movie. And guess what? It didn't do well in the box office. I wonder why, Dave. Okay. Ad books and hype and bullshit and people buying. Why do you think we? Why don't we see Okami two? We see we got Okami in, but okay. But why haven't we seen Okami two, Dave? I wonder. I wonder why that is too. I wonder why Sega did not want to do Bayonetta two. I wonder why. I wonder why. You know, people kind of like Bayonetta one. A lot of the gamers who played Bayonetta one loved it. They're like, oh, it's a great game. You know, I really want to see more Bayonetta. But Sega. Was like, ah, uh, you know, Bayonetta didn't sell well. We're not going to uh, support it as much. And Kamiya and Platinum Games had to go to Nintendo to get Bayonetta 2 made. But a lot of people loved it, Dave. But I wonder why that, that, that wasn't enough to get a sequel.
I wonder. There are franchises like Destiny that are a terrible fucking game stolen from other franchises that has nothing inspired in it whatsoever. Instead, you Destiny 2 steals, uh, Destiny steals a lot of stuff from other game genres, so that, so it sucks. Oh, God of War incorporates everything from other games, it's great. Okay. You'll get more games like God of War. I'm sorry, guys, I would like to play God of War way over Destiny ten times out of fucking ten. I like how he's acting as if God of War is some indie game that's, like, revolutionary. It's fucking God of War. It does a lot of good things, in my opinion. I- I kind of liked it. I kind of like it because it, it uh, reinvents the game. It reinvents the franchise. That's why I like God of War, the new one at least. But it's not like there's some revolutionary, groundbreaking game that's like artistic. It's it's a fucking Sony game. Come on, it's it's a good game. It's a good game, but I mean, it's not like a gift from God. Maybe you disagree with me, but that's me as a ga life to life, lifelong gamer. I want quality for my buck, not reshoveled grinding garbage that was rushed out and overhyped through a massive media budget. And that's why it became popular, not because the game was actually fucking good. That's just my opinion. Maybe you disagree with me, but I like playing quality games. Yeah, if you disagree with me, you don't like quality games. I like quality games. But they, Destiny is a quality game. No, it's not. Shut up. You, your opinion doesn't matter. You can't say that, oh, that's just me, guys. That's my opinion. If you disagree, that's okay. I like quality games. Okay, guys, you know what? I like Skullgirls. If you disagree with me, that's fine. You can you can dislike Skullgirls all you want. That's fine. That's your opinion. But I like quality fighting games, okay? So, there you go. Like, fuck you. What a condescending asshole. That's a condescending emo right there. <laughs> like real really really I like quality games Wow uh, do you like the smell of your own fucking farts okay um let's see here 44k panda also said look I'm not saying to buy games based on the score but what about warning people away from catastrophes like ride to hell or Metal Gear survive same thing yeah, survive survive day one was kind of a disaster because you couldn't play it but I mean, as it is now, it's it's fine. It's a fun game, but I would I I kind of would not recommend it. Like I I would recommend it if you're just looking for a fun game, just to kind of th th to like just play here and there. It's kind of like a disposable disposable game. Uh, but I would not say it's a great game. I w I wouldn't say it's like oh boy, can't wait for Survive Two, something like that. Uh, but I do think I think it should have been twenty, and it is so. There you go. <laughs> Don't buy the game on release day. Let someone else play it. Judge off of that, right? You don't need to be told something a week ahead of time. You just don't. You don't need it. You just need to have a tiny bit of self-control. And by the way, if people had this tiny bit of self-control, they wouldn't blow their, their money on these overhyped franchises. To be if they had self-control, let's say that no one bought games day one, they, that franchise would die. Like, that's how a lot of companies look at it. They look at the launch of the sales, like, in that window, and then after that, they don't give a fuck. And it's like, well, this didn't sell very well day one, so we're not going to bother with this franchise. Again, why do you think Sega was so hesitant to make Bayonetta 2, to publish it? Why do you think that was the case? To begin with, and then they'd have more money to spend on quality games that you find out one or two days after they release, rather than knowing... I mean, why do you think Darkstalkers isn't a thing? Because it didn't sell well. I mean, they based it on fucking the fucking remaster, which is dumb in my opinion, but they based it on that. That didn't sell very well. And they're like, okay, well, clearly no one wants it. Everyone loves Darkstalkers, but, you know, not enough to make Capcom happy. A week ahead of time that everything's overhyped good, and then you waste your money on garbage games. There you go. Um... King of Hypocrisy, I have no idea. And as I said many times, I'm not going to answer questions in regards to detractors, so you wasted your time with that cheer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for oh. one or two. Any bit of self can play it. I don't know what that cheer was, but okay. I'm going to get something to eat. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to up if I'm gonna do all in one part, as I thought, because this is two hours for one part of Ask the King. N no. No, it'll, it'll be separate parts. Sorry. Thought it was going to be one, but not going to do it.